Good hi. 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 Hey, professor. Hi, oh, professor. Uh, you uh, ah, thank you good. very much. You hear me well? Yeah, yeah. Evening. And good morning to you. Uh, good afternoon for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are and, you? Uh, I, I everything is okay. Just uh, I wonder because as I mentioned, I don't have experience with this platform. Okay, Here okay, in okay, our okay. school, uh, uh, we use uh, a lot of uh, Zoom. Okay, okay, okay. Let me uh, let me give you brief training about that. Uh, I am going to stop my screen. Now on bottom right side, there is one icon, present now. Okay. Okay, you, you click on that one. This one? Present now. On bottom right side, there is one icon, present uh, now. And let me see, uh, I open my uh, slides. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me lecture 10. Okay. Then we go with. Um, I need to go for this. Okay. Now you can see my present what uh, no. presentation. H have you opened your presentation? My presentation is now in the screen. 
okay okay now you go to that google meet link window google meet link window and on bottom right side there is icon present now i have yes present now okay you and click on that one click yes. on that one and select okay. entire, entire screen okay and then make Hello. it okay yes yeah now you have you are presenting do you yeah. see my presentation uh, no you go to that presentation window open that one okay yeah yeah, yeah. dialectic yeah. resonator antennas design yeah. and application yeah uh, because okay. when i put it uh, in the forum like this here you can see me well yeah yeah, yeah. perfectly uh just one uh, question when we start start uh, in five minutes yeah yeah in five minutes yeah because now i see just my presentation okay okay no problem you, uh, you. and uh, when uh, just tell me when i will start okay okay no problem. within within five minutes okay in five minutes yeah that's perfect for me okay okay thank you How is weather in your locality? Ah, uh, we have a uh, little snow okay. yesterday. It's a little bit cold, but okay, people okay, they okay. are not worried about uh, the weather, but they are weather about the the virus. We have a second wave yeah, in yeah. Montreal, which is a little bit scary for many people. And we don't. Uh, sometimes we work from home. Today, just to be sure, the internet is good. I I okay, came to okay. my desk. I call you yeah. from my desk. Is okay. because we have a good uh, link from the school. Okay, from home, okay. sometimes is not efficient to work. But sometimes you have some surprise. But when we have courses, we tell, we don't take any chance. But okay, I think okay. the weather is maybe minus. Three minus four degrees, little bit cold. Okay. But people okay. worry not about the winter because we get used with the, the, the weather. The weather is not problem. People okay. they are worried more about this uh, spreading of uh, COVID and yeah, be a little bit. I don't know in uh, India. I hope uh, everything is okay for you. No, same Sorry. situation is here also. We are having a because, period uh, of... The weather is hot or uh, cold now in India? Uh, I think around 20 degrees Celsius ah, temperature good. going on. In this way, you are in a better situation. Because yeah, yeah. Uh, when the weather is very high, I think it's a good uh, sign yeah. and less doesn't help propagation. <clears throat> Okay. But when it is cold, it is different. But we hope maybe here in North America we speak about discovering this new vaccine and we can see maybe in next month we yeah. can vaccinate everybody everywhere. And we hope okay. this disappear from everywhere, not from North sure, America, sure. from India, from China, from world. Because this worldwide. Yeah. yeah. And it should touch be everybody. Yeah, it should be disappeared as earliest as possible from the globe. Yeah. Because every everybody is suffering from that one, especially middle class. Yeah, you are right. And uh, this is change everything in, in the globe. Yeah. Everybody is perturbed now. School, yeah. research, uh, uh, everything now. For, exa for example, in our school, generally we receive many students from outside. From, yeah. from Asia, uh, new student, but this year we couldn't receive them. We accept them, but they still stuck in their country okay, for okay. documentation and for some difficulty related to this. Okay. I think whole okay. winter winter session in your university will go in online mode. Yes. Okay. That's good. And uh, but uh, to be honest. Uh, the production in terms of research papers uh, progress is less, uh, very, very low. The output is not very good. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure.
Uh, I let you organize the uh, the session and just tell me when we start. Okay, okay, okay. Within one, one or two minutes, we will start. I, I was going through your website, you know, university website. Is it okay. mandatory to keep all the things in French there? I think it is Eastern part of Canada, if I'm not wrong. Yes, we okay. are located in Montreal. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, this is INRS, which is National Research Institute, which is a part of University of Quebec. It's a network in different city. Okay. But okay. this center where I am working is uh -huh. in Montreal. Montreal it is in complete the east of uh, east Canada. Canada. Okay. Uh, and maybe uh, the second city after Toronto. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, we here we have a different field and maybe i can give an introduction about this school in my presentation a few minutes okay. and uh, uh, because for me i check many times the the time difference between Montreal <laughs> and yeah. india yes yes, yes. i see the dm mm -hmm. in your case and mm -hmm. should be here uh, in yes. em and just to be sure and the, the, the difference is uh, i think uh, is not 12, an hour, but, uh? 10 10 hours 30 minutes we are, yeah, 30 minutes. We, are we, we are ahead 10 hours 30 minutes from you yeah now it is 8 30. Uh, yeah. it is it is seven o'clock 7 p.m here yeah but here is 8 30 morning okay 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 okay, okay. and i come to my desk at uh, eight <laughs> or more yeah. the, 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 or more earlier okay they can uh, avoid first of all uh, some traffic in the morning yeah. and i think it's very everything is okay for me it is my first experience to give this kind of course uh, like uh, yeah in, in this with this platform and here we give it uh, physically sometimes sure, no sure. Problem. We, we try to do our uh, best to help your student, just uh, yes. this, uh, this graduate student, master and PhD, or uh, uh, all, all, all mixtures. Uh, not, not master. graduate, PG, postgraduate and PhD scholars, as well as uh, some faculty members. Faculty members, uh, uh, master student, PhD student. No, no, no. We, we have not segregated that data, but overall registration are three hundred forty. Okay. Okay. Uh, just uh, this question about the audience when I explain. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, now, Professor, please allow me to start the session because yeah, it's go seven o'clock. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. I extend my warmest welcome to the distinguished speaker of today's session, uh, Professor Tayyab Denidni as well as the participant to this fourth day of one week long ongoing Indo-Canada Spark course on dialectic resonator and its applications. DRA 2020 jointly organized by NIT Silcher, Delhi Technological University, Delhi and Queen's University, Canada and hosted by Electronics and Communication Engineering Department, NIT Silcher. It is my utmost privilege and honor to welcome the first distinguished speaker of today's session, Professor Tayyab Denidni, University of Quebec, Canada. Professor Denidni received MSc and PhD degrees in electrical engineering from Level University, Quebec City, Canada in 1990s and 1994, respectively. From 94 to 2000, he was a professor with the engineering department, University du Quebec in Rimouski, Canada, where he founded the telecommunication laboratories. Since August 2000, he has been with INRS, University du Quebec, Montreal, Canada. He founded RF laboratory at INRS EM, Montreal. He has a great experience with antenna design. He served as a principal investigator on many research projects sponsored by NSERC, FCI, and numerous industries. He has co-authored more than 200 journal papers and 300 conference papers, one book and nine book chapters. He has acquired international recognition for its innovative and pioneering work on electromagnetic periodic structures and their applications on 
the configurable antenna and beam forming antenna systems, adaptive arrays, millimeter waves antennas, and dielectric resonator antennas. He has been elevated <coughs> to the grade of IEEE Fellow for his contribution to the frequency selective surfaces and their applications to reconfigurable antennas. From 2008 to 2010, Dr. Dinitni served as an associate editor for IEEE transactions on antennas and propagation. From 2005 to 2007, Dr. Dinitni served as an associate editor for IEEE antennas and wireless propagation letter. Since 2015, he has been serving as an associate editor for IET electronic letters. In 2012 and 2018, he has been awarded with INRS for outstanding research and teaching achievements. With this, I welcome you, Professor, and invite you to start the session. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Taimur Khan, for the introduction and also for the invitation to this event. And also, I thank all people who are working in organizing this event. Today, I have the pleasure to give a lecture about dielectric resonator antenna design and applications. I have divided this presentation roughly in six parts. I start with a brief introduction where we speak about the history of dielectric resonator and how to use them in antenna area. Then I go for another part when we present the fundamentals of dielectric resonator antenna, especially for engineers and for graduate students and how to understand this area. Then we go for another part. We present the different feeding technique for dielectric resonator antenna. Because in any antenna, you have two parts. You have the resonator and its station. The first part, I speak about the resonators. And the third part, we give an overview, overview of the feeding technique that we can use in this type of antennas. Then when we move another section, when we present the dielectric resonator arrays and how to design them, to feed them, and so on, and how to apply them. And in the five section, we I present more complicated design that related to dual polarized dielectric resonator and circularly polarized dielectric resonators with a different technique, with different design. We discuss these in details. Then we go for another section, we call wideband dielectric resonator antenna. And I finish my lecture with a brief overview about the application of dielectric resonators. And now let's jump in the first part of this lecture introduction that we speak about the history of dielectric resonator when they start. In the late of 60s, the development of low low loss ceramic material opened the way to use dielectric resonator as a high heat element for circuit application for energy storage such as filter and oscillator. This means in the beginning, dielectric resonator is dedicated morally for filters design or oscillator, and their function is to storage energy. And at this time, there was problem with the leakage or radiation leakage, and this has become a disadvantage for dielectric filters. And other people, they transform these drawbacks to some advantage and they increase this leakage for, and, and by increasing this uh, leakage, we can use these uh, resonators for antenna. Because and in, uh, in 1983, this idea using cylindrical resonator by Stuart Long, they explore this idea to increase the radiation from these resonators. And, and from that, we start to use dielectric resonator as, as an antenna, not for storage, 
as filters or associator. In this way, we have to uh, take care about the design, about the materials and different parameters to boost this radiation from these resonators. And then after that, when we start with this uh, cylindrical, we go with a different shape like rectangular, hemispherical, and other shapes have been studied by different groups worldwide in North America, in Europe, in Asia, and everywhere. But the beginning of this topic start with filter and associator. Then we move to into antenna application by increasing the radiation from these resonators. And they become dielectric resonator antenna uh, for a new design. Next, in early 80s, the DRA are mainly for various feeding. These many groups, they contribute to design a different dielectric resonator, especially providing a new mechanism for this dielectric resonator antenna. And also they provide uh, some analytical uh, or numerical technique to design and to analyze this uh, antenna in terms of uh, beatings, in terms of Q factor, in terms of bandwidth, and in terms of radiation. And this means we start creating a different tools in theory, in simulation, in fabrication, in measurement. And after that, this area become very, very well known. And many groups from worldwide, maybe one, I mentioned one from Mississippi, needed by Professor Kish, another one from RMC, needed by Hunter, other groups, I think, from China, from India, they contribute in different uh, design by providing a new type of uh, dielectric resonator and also a new um, uh, feeding techniques. And this now this technique of dielectric resonator is matched up when known and we can design different uh, dielectric resonator antenna with a different operation and for different applications. Since 2000, the area study are mainly in wideband dielectric resonator and also for compact dielectric resonator. This is the most uh, research in this area recently because in, in the beginning, uh, dielectric resonator suffered from the bandwidth and maybe sometimes from the slice. And when we have dielectric, this become heavy. And in this way, people they try to improve this design in terms of compactness and also in terms of bandwidth in order to cover many applications in the same way. Now I go for, this is a brief introduction just to mention where we start for direct resonator antenna and what is the direction of research worldwide. Now we speak about the fundamental on dielectric resonator antenna. The first section is speak advantage and disadvantage of dielectric resonator antenna compared to other antenna like a microstrip antenna, wire antenna, wire guide. Why do we work for these dielectric resonator? And then I give also more details about the dielectric material, because this is very, very important to have an idea which type of material that we use for these dielectric resonators. And we, and we ask ourselves, these materials available or not in the market and how to choose them, especially for the design. Then another section, which is very important, I just give what is the cavity resonator in terms of dielectric? Because everybody now what's mean cavity when we use conventional wire guide or microstrip, but in, with a resonator, why we call it resonator? Because it's a cavity. And just we define some fundamental uh, parameter, parameter and fundamental uh, concept you know, for this type of resonators. Then we give a comparison between conductor and dielectric resonator. What is the difference between 
these two types with and why we use dielectric resonator and not conductor resonators. And we define technically a band dielectric resonator antenna, which is the tau. We, we speak about the advantage of dielectric resonators. And there are two types, the physical with the physical. First of all, this dielectric resonator antenna is very small and compact. Their size is proportional to uh, lambda zero divided by lambda r or squared, which is the propagating lambda in the material. This means if you would use some dielectric material with high dielectric constant, we can come up with a very, very small and tiny, tiny resonator or small antenna. This means we can control the size by using some specific dielectric constant, especially is very high. And this is advantage. We have, this means we have compactness, small and so on. Another one, if we reduce the size, this means we come up with a light white. This means the antenna become light and small, especially if we go in high frequency and with high dielectric constant, this, the size of weight also is become very, very uh, small. And the question why we speak late of weight Weight is a crucial, especially if you use this dielectric uh, resonator in an array. For one element, it's not a problem. But if you have many elements, for example, 16, 32, or even 1,000 elements, you have to be worried about the size of one element and how to distribute it in an array. And we come up with one array, which is light. Because this is a crucial issue, especially for dielectric resonator arrays. And also we mentioned low cost, but this is maybe uh, not true. Sometimes it depends on the tool how to fabricate, which is the cost of the term fabrication and the cost of the material that we use to, de to design your dielectric resonators. This means we can achieve low cost, but be sure that you choose the right material, available material in the market, and the material that we can handle, that we can cut, and we can reshape, because not all material is easy to fabricate. But we have this advantage if we take care about some issue related to the choice of the material and the choice of the tools. Also, dielectric resonator, they have an advantage. They provide wide bandwidth operation. This means if we design your dielectric resonator, these dielectric can cover a different standard. For example, uh, wireless communication system at, at 900 or 1 gig, 2 gig, and even we can go with a broadband or ultra wide band from 3 up to 10 gig. It depends on the design. But this is they offer more bandwidth than conventional uh, antennas such as microstrip or wire antenna. This means also we can consider this wide bandwidth. And also uh, with that uh, resonator, we have a variety of a different feeding. This means we have choices to feed our uh, antenna or to excite our resonator. This means give you more flexibility in terms of design. And we come up with a different performance because we have a different uh, feeding. And when we have this flexibility, you can use your resonator for, as a single element or as a ray with the right and the perfect uh, feeding and network. This is also certain, can be a, uh, a good advantage for a uh, resonator because uh, dielectric resonator compared to microstrip, this means you have also this flexibility to, cho to choose your feeding. And we have also a different shape of resonator. This means the resonator can be cylindrical, spherical, cubic, any form that you can imagine. And, and, if, and you know, when we choose this different form, this means we can excite different modes, different, and we can achieve different uh, operation frequency, and we can have also a different of radiation pattern shape. This means we can control the radiation pattern, 
the operator frequency and the bandwidth with this type of resonator. This is the physical advantage of direct resonator compared to conventional antennas that are microstrip or wire antenna or wire gun. Now we go for a, another section that we speak about the electrical uh, parameter. In the electrical parameter, we have wide frequency bandwidth. This is why I mentioned it. And the excitation of different mode, this means we, we can excite different mode. Generally, we have TE mode, TM mode, and hybrid mode. The three type of, of modes that we can excite. And each mode, it can give you the shape of radiation pattern. Maybe one looks like a short dipole, other one like short magnetic dipole, and so on. This means when you have this flexibility to choose your uh, mode, you can also choose uh, uh, distribution of current inside the resonator, and we should come up with a different uh, addition pattern. This is very uh, important, and also we can excite two different modes to achieve some some characteristic, some maybe like a dual polarization or circular polarization, for example. If you excite two orthogonal modes in the same time. And this is also the advantage compared to microstrip. And also we have a high efficiency because with this type of direct resonator, we don't have a surface wave and we don't have conductor loss because there is no conductor in the, in the antenna. This means we avoid conductor loss that we see it in microstrip or wire antenna. And also we don't have a surface wave, this generally this issue we can see it in microstrip, and this lead in some leakage. In this way, with this type of antenna, we can avoid these two problems. And by avoiding these two problems, we can increase our efficiency, or we can achieve very high efficiency. Another advantage of the uh, hyperunit is they can handle. Uh, high power. This means uh, have been very, very important uh, this issue, especially if you use your antenna at the base station and you have huge power to transmit to cover some region. This way, with direct resonator, we can handle some high power uh, at the base station or at one uh, access, whatever, it depends on the application, but if you need to uh, transmit uh, high power, we can use this type of antenna. It depends also in the feeding. But the beauty of this uh, direct resonator, we can use high power. The last but not the least, we can have a wide range of dielectric constant can be used, allowing the designer to have control of the physical size of the delay and the memory. This means when you have uh, a lot of choice of director con constant, they give you more flexibility and more freedom to achieve what you want in terms of resonance, frequency of uh, operation, and the bandwidth and the radiation pattern, which is this means direct resonance can offer more choices than microstrip especially in terms of bandwidth, uh, radiation efficiency, and of frequency operation. This is that summarized uh, the advantage of dielectric compared to microstrip in physical aspect or in electric aspect. And we can see this is, topic is very, very interesting. Now we present the advantage of this uh, dielectric resonator, but in the line there is no free lunch. We have to pay a little bit of the price because designing microstrip antenna is very easy, cheaper than dielectric resonator. Material from dielectric is generally is very hard and abrasive. And this means we have some difficulty to fabricate these resonators. And so if we use, for example, a hacksaw 
convert her. So this is we can't use. It. Maybe in this way we have to find the right tools to cut and to reshape these resonators. And generally, to cut this resonator, we use a diamond diamond blades and diamond blades because they have some diamonds in the, in the blades and this means it's costly and sometimes when we have these uh, diamond blades we can use it just for two or three uh, prototype and it's finished and we have to replace it with a new one this means when we uh, design and we like to develop a dial coordinator we have to think twice First of all, to choose the right material with the right dike to question, and also to think about the tool that we will use to prototype. Sometimes it is not available. In this way, we have to deal maybe with some companies or some supplier or some groups of research to fabricate your design. And this sometimes is tech time and money and cost. And this is the, the only disadvantage. I think this is disadvantage of this type of antenna compared to microstrip. Microstrip is easy to fabricate, is cheaper, the substrate is available. But for dielectric, we have problems sometimes of availability of, of the dielectric materials and the tools that we need to uh, for the needed for fabrication. In this way, if some groups, students to research, interested about this topic, first they think about the available material in their environment, in their country. Second, they think about the tools, machine and diamond blades and so on. And this is costly and need also some maybe some skills, technician for cutting and so on. This is the only, I think, disadvantage of direct transition. And in my experience, we, in terms of simulation, it's very easy to sort of simulate the design, but the big issue generally in terms of publication. And maybe now there are new tools, new equipment that are that dedicated for direct resonate. Now, I speak for another parameter, which is very, very important for the electric um, material because the, we now we need these materials and these materials have some property. First of all, the electric constant, which is very important to choose. The loss tangent, the loss in the material is very important. And also when we use some material and we buy it from some supplier, they have a frequency range of operation. This means they mentioned this material maybe for microwave band, band the other one for millimeter wave band, is for some specific bit, because after outside the specified the frequency range, the material lose or his uh, uh, some property. This means the dielectric constant is not the same and the loss is not the same. And this means when we try to use some material, we have to choose to look for the frequency range operation. And sometimes this is specified by the fabricant or the by supplement, the range of operation of this material. And also another parameter, mechanical strength. This is very important, especially in terms of fabrication and how the thermal stability. This means for some application, we have to think about thermal lab stability and chemical stability of these materials or in terms of uh, in time and uh, and in temperature. The, also the interface quality is in terms of what and ability of, to etch some 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 uh, conductor and this is especially if you like to 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 to, to use some conformal feeding on the dielectric that and the reliability of the material, which is very, very important. This we can see at least uh, uh, a few property of materials that we need to check before we use this material and use it in our design. And the most important 
as I mentioned, I put them director constant, the loss and the frequency range, and the rest also the mechanical and the, the ability of etching some strip on the on the dielectric resonators. Now I give uh, uh, some available some uh, available uh, material that we can find uh, on the market because it's very important uh, for designer and engineer to know which company and which uh, supplier that we use some material. And here we put just the famous and the most popular supplier. You can see in this table the company, the material, and the dielectric constant. This means I mentioned the Countess Laboratory. They offer some material that can vary from 6.3 up to 100, uh, 100, 140. Another company, Immersion and Cumming, they have their material, they call it Eco Stock, from a three up to 30. And a third company is Hiltec Microwave. We can have a different and different name, magnesium, manganese, aluminum, iron, ferrite, and so on. Up to, uh, and we have a different uh, uh, director constant with different value and we get and give you also the accuracy of this value and we can choose the material that fit with your design for example if you need a design uh, with a director constant around nine we can choose the first one if you need 16 you go for magnesium titanium and then you you for the third one you go for lithium ferrite and so on. And it's another company they call Morgan Electro Ceramics. And also we have this CR and CN Titanic, magnesium C Titanic, and all these uh, variation of dielectric constant. And we have variety. But you can see from this table, the the dielectric constant doesn't exist for every value. We have just some discrete value exists in the market. Means if you look, for example, in some specific value, you have you can find it. They just choose your design, choose some direct one available in the market. Otherwise, it is not uh, in your simulator. If you choose some value doesn't exist here, this means he can create for you some errors or some problems. This way, first of all, look which material is available from your supplier or from the company they can send you, or even they can fabricate a resonator for you if you can ask. Uh, here, another also for table I could continue in this, there are another company Murata, and they have different uh, material. They call them u Siri and Suri, very Siri, and each Siri, they give you a range of dielectric uh, constant. And you can see we have very, very uh, huge choice of directory constant. Another one they call Passive Ceramic Incorporation material, not specified, but they call PD series. And this means you can choose from six up to 170. And another one they call Tmx component and Tmx telecom. And we have three different materials and each one they cover one specific range and the last but not the least they call Tonstack, which is the thing the, the most popular i put it at the, the end but they are also a different name of uh, these dielectric materials and each one they give you a range of dielectric constants and you can see the, all this material is basically in titanium or barium and zinc and so on. This is uh, like uh, we can work with uh, chemical people and they can give you the right material. But this, to summarize this long table, this means we have many companies that can provide you a different uh, dielectric materials. And from this, we can fabricate prototype a different antenna. 
the only issue we don't have all value. We have some specific value, and from this specific value, a designer should provide the value for him. This depends in the value constant and also in the cost is not the same. And also the range of frequency for each material. Each company, they give you a range of frequency and it depends where we like to design our antenna. For example, at microwave or millimeter wave or which expand, key band and so on. You have in this way, you have to find dilemma between available material, the cost of the material and the availability of material in your country or in your region. This is the, and this is the, give you the material, the open this that are, you can handle uh, this material from different company and with a different price and different uh, value and different quality. Now I finish with the, the material. Now we know the material is available. Now I like to go for another fundamental um, issues, definition, uh, the definition of resonators. The cavity has anterior surface which reflect a wave of specific frequency. When wave that is resonate with the cavity enters, it becomes back and forth within the cavity with a low loss. This is like any cavity. This means say, when we have a uh, resonance, you have this generation of frequency, and this is the same definition as uh, any cavity resonator. The frequency, two uh, variables determine the primary frequency of the cavity resonator. This, this means your, uh, your frequency operation of your cavity depends in two parameters. The first one, the physical size but also the shape of the cavity. This means when I speak about shape, it's cylindrical or cube or spherical or hemispherical. This means there is just two parameters that control your resonance of uh, frequency resonance in this way. And the quality of factor, this is the same definition like any cavity. This means the maximum energy storage during the cycle divided by average energy dis dissipated by cycle and this we can look the define and calculate or a few factor for this uh, resonator and this depends in the storage energy and the speed energy and the q factor depend can give you an idea about your resonance frequency and the bandwidth we can see this link between the bandwidth and the q factor of this type of resonator. Now, because we mentioned that we have two types of resonators, that we have a conductor resonators, which enclose the wire guide, like this one, the red one. And we have dielectric resonators. And at these dielectric resonators, just we need some dielectric constant very high. Here we have a perfect electric conductor up to the walls that cover. Here we have a, a perfect magnetic conductor. This means we have just the, diff the only difference between conductor resonator and dielectric resonator. You have here P, perfect electric conductor, the, the surface, and here we have a perfect magnetic conductor. And the, the size of the electric resonator is considerably smaller than the size of the empty conductor. Uh, at the operating at the same frequency. This means we, with the, the direct resonator, we have advantage that we can have a small and compact resonators compared to metallic ones. Also, in the, the dielectric material has a good temperature stability and low dielectric loss. This is the main advantage of dielectric resonator compared to conductor resonator. This means we have less loss term and also in terms of size. Now, just I continue in this section, dielectric resonator, just give a brief history. We start with energy storage device. 
and after that we move to dielectric resonator and by enhancing the dissipated or radiation addition to convert it to this storage energy device to antenna. The idea is take this resonator which we use it for storage in the past in filter design and oscillator and we push this dissipated power or radiation leakage in order to transform this resonator from storage to radiation and we come up with dielectric resonator antenna. Now I move to the third section that we speak uh, now that speak about the feeding technique because in the first part we speak about the resonator we know what is the resonator which material that we use and how we can use now how to excite this type of resonator and in any antenna you have two parts you have the resonator and you have the feeding network this feeding network can be a coaxial probe aperture coupling or dielectric maximum strip feed line or dielectric image wire guide coplanar wire guide and conformal strip or patch and we go for some example for each one of this type of uh, uh, excitation we start with the coaxial uh, feeding probe this coaxial can be inside or outside the probe either located inside and the amount and this is the when we put it here just we have sorry we have the coupling between this the feeding and the resonator here also is different this means the amount of care can be optimized by adjusting the, the probe height and the, the dielectric resonator location which means we can adjust the um, placement placement of the dielectric resonator and the height of the probe and or we can put it inside. Depending on the location of the probe, various modes can be excited. For the probe located here adjacent to the, the directory, the magnetic field of the, the mode TE11 delta mode, the, of the rectangular array can are excited, for example, which radiate like horizontal magnet, magnetic dipole. This means by this feeding, we can generate its radiation pattern similar to the horizontal magnetic type. And we excite this TE mode. For the probe located in the center of, of the, the cylindrical area, we can excite another mode which called TE011 mode. So, and this radiates like a vertical type. This means you, you can see with by choosing just the, how to feed this static resonator, we can excite a different mode. And each mode gives you some specific radiation path. One looks like magnetic dipole, for example, horizontal. Another one will give you like a vertical dipole. And then this is very, very, this flexibility can give you uh, more freedom to choose the right feeding for the right applications depend where you are and uh, you use it and which type of addition filter pattern you like but the idea just I give you that we can feed our dielectric resonator rectangular or cylindrical or whatever by probe and this probe can be inside or outside so the difference inside and outside is the, we excited different modes. Here, uh, let me see. Yes, uh, aperture coupling. For aperture coupling, we can also feed the dielectric resonator with some slots, for example, and we have a different shape for the slots. For example, a sample cross. Uh, it's like uh, the with the is. Uh, circle or with C shape. And by this, we can avoid the superior radiation 
And it's easy to integrate, for example, the feeding network with the printed MMRC circuit with other circuits. And here we give an example. I just mentioned two work or two paper that published in the past. You can see the aperture here. We have dielectric resonators. We have here micro strip line, and we have the slot. And the slot can excite the this cylindrical strip. We can also use a dielectric resonator, a slot, but with a coaxial line. Coaxial line coupled with the slot, and the slot is coupled with the resonators. This means another design here. We have also dielectric a slot and a strip line. This is Yes, and this is means we we can play with with uh, with the slot and also with the transmission line. This means we have three different a uh, transmission line. The first one is a micro strip. The second one is coaxial line, and third one is a strip line. Just is just, and all of them they use slot, but the line is different. This way. Also, we have a flexibility to choose a different technology, micro strip, coaxial, strip line. Another here also the direct, we can also feed the, the resonator by direct micro strip line. This means there is no uh, slot, there is only the dielectric and we have the micro strip line here and we can control the, this lump, which is X, that to feed this dielectric resonator. And the, again, people if are interested in this work, we can see the reference here, micro specialization line station, dielectric resonator antenna from Mr. Long and all. Another feeding that we can use the image waveguide excitation. We have the waveguide is here and dielectric resonator here. And even here, we can use many elements. They feed it with the same line. And this is experimental millimeter wave using dielectric resonator, but by means of dielectric waveguide. This means we just, you see another way to excite the dielectric resonator, but with coupling by using image wave gap. Now, the coupling and wave guide excitation, the advantage that low loss in this fish compared to micro strip line reduces surface wave excitation compared to micro strip, especially in electrically fit substrate. Avoid drilling in antenna as required with a coaxial row feed. Ideally suited for millimeter wave design, ease of active integration, and we don't need any wheel. We can give more details about this uh, third uh, type of feeding of dielectric resonator. We can, this means we feed the resonator, which here we choose like a Q by uh, my CPW, Coplanar Wire Guide. And this coupling of that can be capacitive, inductive, or can both capacitive and inductive. Here it looks like open circuit, it is like looks like a short circuit, and here like any low we have capacitive and inductive impedance, and this way we have three types. Of with the same technology. It depends on each one you can generate some bandwidth, some performance, and so on, and you can combine that. It's just this give you that we have three types with the same technology. And another one, another uh, feeding technique we call it conformal strip or patch excitation. This means we can have a feeding and we have some conformal line like on this. Uh, on this hemispherical, we can feed the uh, microscope like that, or like this, we have a patch inside the, the dielectric uh, resonators, or in the surface, by the way, like conformal, 
And by this conformal, we can achieve some performance in terms of bandwidth and also in terms of gain and radiation pattern. This work is from our group. Mr. Long and myself, we design this type. And if you are interested in the, about this design, you can consult this paper. Another work from another group from Long is also they use conformal strip excitation of dielectric resonators. Lines. And here, the shape of dielectric resonator in our view is look like H. And here, we, in the inside, we have this. Sorry. That and dielectric. Now I finish with the, the, the feeding technique. You see that a, a variety of feeding technique that can go from the sample to more complicated feeding uh, technique. And the idea by using this different uh, technique of feeding, we can achieve a different performance in terms of operating frequency, bandwidth, and also in terms of radiation pattern efficiency. This means as an engineer, we can have very large flexibility of, uh, of this design. Uh, now I move to another uh, part with dielectric resistance and antenna array. This means this dielectric material, we can use it as a single element, but if we need more gain, or we need, for example, beam sweeping or beam forming, we need to use this as a huge, as a regroupment for many elements in order to achieve what we want in terms of uh, gain. And in this way, we have a different way to feed this element in serial way or in parallel way, or combined uh, feeding. And I also, we mentioned some design consideration in antenna array. Here we start with a series fed array. For example, we have four elements and we can feed them in serial way. We have here the feeding and feed this one, then one and so on. The problem with the serial feed is, uh, is a sample, the advantage, but the disadvantage is a narrow band. I commonly use it for non-uniform uh, amplitude because this element, they don't have the same amplitude in terms of uh, feeding or even in terms of phase. And, and after that, we can have some design that looks like binomial array or chibi array or whatever. It's a sample, but less flexible. And here we give some work uh, from some group that designed this antenna, p and all. We designed this feeding serial. We can see here a transmission line, and we have this dielectric resonator fitted in serial way. Here the equivalent circuit, and here some, some uh, results in terms of S11. This is just the reflection coefficient. We can see that we we can operate, no, let me, let me see. We can operate the, at the seven gig, and also we have wide band from six, maybe uh, eight up to even a eight gig. And this is one design. Another design, another technique that we can use it for array with a parallel uh, Feeding the advantage, we have a broadband uh, operation of this uh, feeding. The complex, the feeding is a little bit complex, complex and need more space compared to the serial one. It means we need to design the feeding and we need here some power divider, power divider, and also we have to think in terms of uh, and matching of this uh, consumption line and also when they connect it to their array should be matched to the to the radiating element. And this design is commonly used for a uniform array. This means all elements, they can receive the same amplitude, magnitude of excitation, also the same phase. Is the, this way we have a uniform antenna dielectric resonator. Array. 
but the design parameter is a little bit complicated and need more space. Here, an example of uh, this is a parallel pedal way. This work is the source. We can see here uh, four elements, cylindrical elements. They use some slots, and this is the feeding uh, of uh, network feeding net for the array. That's it. And here we can go with more complicated. Here we have 16 elements. We can see this work from long and all two-dimensional cylindrical array. You can see here uh, the pictures. Here also the feeding network. And also we have to take care about the space between the elements, uh, horizontal and vertical. The space generally we take care in order to avoid the coupling between the element and also to avoid the scoring lobes especially if the electric array use it for some scanning. And this means you can see that the electric resonator can be easily used to build a, a bigger array. And this material especially is very small. It depends on the dielectric constant and the operating frequency. But we can use it at microwave band, uh, millimeter wave band, and even in terahertz band. It depends just of the tools that we need. Another uh, technique to feed an array, which combine it serial and parallel. And here we have an example from Pitos and all where we have a serial in this part, this part, but here we have a parallel line to divide the, between two sections. This means we have two subarray. And each subarray is fitted in serial way, but both of them, the branch, they fitted in parallel way. And we can see that a different material. This work you operate around one, one gig. And here the, the details about the resonator. We also use three different materials, epsilon wire with, with different uh, dielectric constant. And this idea is maybe just to come up with the broadband operation of dielectric resonators. And then we will we use it for uh, with the array. Now, uh, uh, present some design consideration. And, uh, the first one, the element, the geometry of the element can be cylindrical, rectangular, hemispherical, et etc. Another consideration of the ray is the feeding technique. It can be a probe, microstrip line, CPW, or app coupling. All we know, we present them some brief uh, definition and a brief uh, description of this type of feeding. And also the number of elements. Uh, and this is uh, fixed by the demand again. If we need a high gain, we need a lot of elements. If we need uh, just uh, reduced gain, maybe increased by 3 dB, 6 dB, depends. In the application and where we use our antenna array, we have to consider the number of elements. Another one is the space between elements is very important. We have select lambda over two, but maybe we can go with more or less. It depends on the available space between the element and also in the geometry and the size of these resonators. If the, the space is is very small, we have a problem with uh, mutual coupling. If the space is very large, we have a problem with creating loss. This way, we have to handle uh, these two issues and to find a compromise to achieve the right spacing, to have less mutual coupling, and we avoid the creating loss. And the last but not the least for the array, we have to select the feeding network. This may be a serial feed, parallel feed, or a combination. Now we go for the another section, which is just I speak about the dual and circularly polarized antenna. These dielectric resonators, we can use them to design antenna with dual polarized. And this dual polarity can be fed by a probe, slot, coupling, uh, or conformal strip, or circular uh, polarized. 
there is also we have different feeding with a single feed, double feed, or array feed. And they are different, by the way, because and the application also, also is different for this type of panel. Dual polarizer is generally used for a wireless communication system to have uh, polarization diversity in the system. The second one, circular polarization, generally we use it uh, for satellite application and to create some robust uh, link between to Earth and orbit. And, and this is the, but they are different in terms of application and also in terms of design. Uh, the dual uh, polarizer, the advanced dual polarizer operation provides more information. Application can be in radar on, and also in several wireless communications. Design concept can be a bandwidth, radiation pattern, and also the cross polarization level between uh, the two feeding of the two polarization and also the isolation between the two feeding of uh, them. Here just I present uh, briefly, just know if I have more time or not. Uh, a dual circular polarization, I give in this table with a different uh, feeding or probe, ring aperture or probe and aperture and we have see some differences in terms of uh, resonant frequency, bandwidth, and isolation, and addition and radiation pattern. And also, I present here uh, the feeding. The feeding can be like this, two probes, one for one each polarization. In this way, we excite two different modes, or like here, here and here. Same thing here. One, for example, vertical or horizontal, and this feeding, or we can have one feeding through a slot, another one through a probe, and, or we can have two different technology, one with the microstrip, another one with the CPW. Okay, and and, and also the fee and uh, the link here, the coupling between the resonator, we use uh, a slot. This is for slot, and here we present some work from many people who contribute in, uh, in this design. And we can see that we have, uh, for example, for this design, uh, dual polarizer to use it here in this situation. And we can see the S parameters S11 for the first pore, S22 for the second pore, but before we have two pores and as the one which uh, represent the isolation between the element and here we can see the radiation pattern uh, in h plane and e plane and also we see the cross polarization and this means we can design some um, some dual polarized uh, with a simple uh, feeding or with complicated feeding is depend uh, now the advantage of circular polarization, now we move to circular polarization, we have circular overcome to multipath. Application is the GPS for satellite application. And design consideration for CPI is the bandwidth, radiation pattern, and action ratio, which is the very important in terms of bandwidth. Circular polar condition, this means we have to come up with two orthogonal modes in an equal amplitude and in a phase quadrature. This means to have, have this circular polarization. The method to design circular polarization, the DRA, we have we can go with a single feed or a double feed or a red. It means we have three ways to achieve this circular polarization. Mm. Here we present a simple design. And this means just we have single feeding, but we have cut here and cut. This technique is similar to microstrip, and we come up with a circular polarization. Another design we can have with aperture here with the microstrip line, ground lane, and the other feeding. We have another feeding with a probe. 
Yeah, and, and this is to generate circular project. This work, Mr. Oliver, circular polarized electric resonator, he details. Now, uh, just I ask for time, I still have time or not? <laughs> yes, first, first lecture about two hours as per our schedule. If something is left, then you can continue. Uh, after, after finishing first lecture, you can have a break of five minutes if you require. No, or you, for, the, for the first lecture, how many times I can... Time time is already over. If you require, then five minutes you can take more or then... Okay, or, uh, this means uh, I can't finish this presentation and I continue the second one. That, okay. is up to you. that is up to you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. I continue for uh, circular polarized. The yeah. Circular polarized, uh, we can generate by uh, creating a cross dielectric resonators and we feed them just one slot or we do the inverse. We have a Sanger resonator and we have a cross slot uh, to feed this uh, antenna and the, the work. Uh, there are two papers mentioned here as an example to generate circularly polarized dielectric resonators using uh, um, model polarization current is from uh, 80 bone, I think from CRC. And uh, you can, to generate, I think you can think in terms of uh, direct resonator. We have a cross like here, the first one, or inverse the same way. Another design here for uh, circularly polarized dielectric resonator. Here we can also come up with a transmissive line, but we have a cross and we can generate circular polarized. Another design that we have uh, uh, a slot, but with a C shape like this one, and we can generate also uh, circular polarized with what's called annular slot. This not finished annular, but is open annular a slot to generate dielectric uh, circular polarized for uh, dielectric resonators. And also uh, here we have a parasitic slot uh, aperture for uh, circularly polarized. We can see have transmission line here, and we have here some a slots uh, parasitic and the, the idea is to generate a circular polarized uh, operation in this way. And another way also with, we can also use a parasitic strips, a transmission line and we have strips distributed around the cylindrical or around the, the cube or hemispherical. And this is means we have a lot of uh, approach to achieve uh, a circular polarization. And also uh, another type uh, with, uh, with circular polarization. This means also we can use hybrid coupler like this. We can really use Wilkinson or T-junction splitter to generate circular polarization. And here also we can have uh, two feed points or one, uh, two pinpoints for cylindrical or dielectric, and we have this variety of uh, uh, feeding network. Uh, now, uh, just uh, like to finish quickly, the cylindrical polarizer with a double feeding. We can also have that instead we have single feeding, we have two feeding. And we have some phase 90 degrees, we can have this shape. And we also we can use a conformal extension here and extension here to generate a circular layer polarized operation. Another uh, technique like this, which is not easy but complicated, we can see the results here. And also we can see the actual ratio is a little bit larger than we and here simulation and measurement for this work. Okay, this is just, I don't like to spend a lot of, and this means circular polarization, we have a single feed or a double feed. 
sample feed is sample, double feed complex. First one is a narrow band, other one is wide band. This means complexity come with a good performance. And this depends also, as I mentioned, for the operation of the application of this uh, direct resonator. If you use it for wide band, we maybe you use a double feed. If you just need a narrow band, we can go with a single feed. Now, now we, the last but not the least to generate circular process, we can use the antenna array. We have four elements here and we feed them with the same magnitude, but with a different phase. The first one, zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 and 270. And this array, this antenna is a linear polarized, but the global uh, output of the array generate the circular uh, polarized. And the advantage of this technique, we can generate uh, a broadband um, operation, and also we can increase the gain. This means we have two object, a good bandwidth and uh, high gain. Maybe we can go even for uh, three up to six GB dB gain. And this means the gain come from the right factor and the circular polarization come from this is a phase antenna array. This is a, the this distribution of the phase. And here, the example of this uh, design, we can see that the first one with zero degrees, and then we can create delay of in the transmission line to generate these 90 degrees. Then the same thing for 180 and the same 270 degrees. And the combat, this, this element, all this element is linear, but the combination here, the output, it give a circular polarized antenna, and the element here is uh, just choose the as elliptical dielectric resonator, which is like cylindrical, but this is another choice. And here we can see the bandwidth for the, the element, the actual ratio for one element, and when you have four elements with hybrid ring, we can see the bandwidth here, and the actual ratio we can achieve better performance in terms of uh, actual ratio bandwidth and also in terms of uh, gain. The gain is not here, but sure we have more gain, better than one element. Uh, now uh, I move uh, quickly because uh, for uh, wide band dielectric resonators and for the dielectric resonator, we can increase the bandwidth in terms with using some specific uh, dielectric constant, or we can control the shape of the resonators. Another technique to widening in the bandwidth technique, we can use a stack dielectric uh, technique, or we can introduce air gap technique, some special feeding technique, also hybrid technique and positive element. This is the last section of this, my lecture, how to design a dielectric resonator with a brown band. And here we present uh, an example of uh, how to use dielectric constant to, to increase the bandwidth. And we can see here uh, with a different uh, dielectric constant, here we have a different bandwidth. This means we can control the bandwidth by choosing low or high dielectric constant. This is for cylindrical and this is also for cubic. And this is that this technique is limited, but this means we with low dielectric constant we have more bandwidth. Another technique that we use a starting uh, dielectric uh, materials, and we have here we have we have three different or two different, and we have feeding like this. We can feed only one element. We can feed two elements, and this is also called stacking uh, different uh, slabs with a different dielectric constant. And some people like mentioned some work from Cash and Walsh and other people. They use this approach to come up with uh, a broadband uh, 
dielectric resonator antennas. Another one uh, when you bend it is the stacked and embedded uh, dielectric. We can embed one dielectric inside another one, like this is inside. We can see that we can achieve some bandwidth. This is also a very interesting uh, technique to wide the bandwidth. This means we combine stacked with embedded dielectric material. This means the material here and here is different. Here, here is different. And the widening bandwidth also by creating some air gap, for example, between the resonators and the ground plane here, or here for the cylindrical material. And I give some example here. Here we can see some, we create air gap here in the ground plane or just in the limited. Here we have two design. This design is done by one of my students and we have two different design. And we see that for two antenna by just controlling uh, the, this, uh, the size of the gap here. And we can come up with a very large bandwidth. You can see you can cover from three up to six giga of bandwidth. And also in turn, you, you can see this frequency can be increased by this technique. Uh, just to like go quickly because I don't have time. Then also we can create a gap like this by two materials, one like this, and we stuck second one but we create a gap here by creating this gap we have a very large bandwidth and this is simulation and measurement and we can see that we cover up from up um, roughly 1.7 up to up to 2.5 uh, by using this uh, technique this is the one by creating this gap and this is one way to the gap is here here or here, you can see it in this picture. You can also create the gap here around this triangle. And also we come up with uh, a band, operating band with a proud band from two up to 2.5. You can see simulation and measurement. If people are interested in uh, this work, uh, the work is published by Mr. Rao, myself, and Professor Sabak, who collaborate with us uh, in this area for many years. And we call T-shaped dielectric resonator with equilateral triangular cross-section. This means we can achieve a large bandwidth by stacking two dielectric resonator and adding some gap between the ground plane and the second uh, slab of dielectric resonator. Another technique also from a group of Kesh and all, they have also the same approach, but we have a gap here and here, and we can stack different materials and create some gap, and we can pump uh, with the uh, large bandwidth from roughly 8.5 up to 13.5 gig. And here, uh, this is a uh, widening bandwidth technique with air gap we can also have the gap inside and close it you can see it here this is the feeling and this is just the design this work also from cash needs group probably and i really very excited by l shape pro the l shape is here is the, the feeling and we have the uh, the air gap here and we come up with a nice uh, design with uh, a large bend. Uh, another uh, technique also with uh, widening with widening the bandwidth, but in this way uh, we can use some specific uh, feeding. And here we can see use this cross, or we can use this L shape to achieve wide bandwidth and we can see that we can generate uh, a broadband uh, operation by just selecting the right uh, feed. Now the last and not least the uh, widening bandwidth technique with some special feeding here we use uh, 
he uses uh, some conformal patch, uh, which is etched on the dielectric resonator. And the idea we can come up with a, a very large bandwidth here, the design, and here we fabricated prototype. We can see that we stuck many slabs and this feeding we have this is a micro strip line and also this patch that used to feed the, the dielectric resonator and we can achieve a, a large band bandwidth and we call it patch excitation this initial excitation this one now would be just uh, give a comparison between uh, different uh, feeding and, and we can see that uh, we can achieve a different uh, bandwidth reference one reference two reference this is just in a different design and we can see uh, the difference the reference to this the design the second design the third one and uh, yeah, the third one this and this is the same just this is the fabrication and this is from our work the other is from other reference, and we mention them, and we compare them. We can see that the proposed uh, design uh, will achieve uh, 62.8 percent, which uh, outperforms the other design. And here, uh, the same in uh, winding man we another technique with uh, with uh, have uh, stepped the patch excitation. You can see this is another technique, another approach that we achieve a uh, broad band. Uh, wide mean bandwidth also with hybrid technique. This means uh, we can use another approach. Instead to use only dielectric resonator, we use two technology. This means we have a dielectric and we have a monopole, which a wire antenna with dielectric. And the combination between them, they can generate also uh, a large bandwidth. And here we can see the example of the dielectric and the monopole, and the bandwidth is very large. This, uh, and the details about this design is here. We can see that this is the dielectric resonator, and this is the monopole, and this is the, just the background of the monopole. And the combination between them let us to have uh, operating bandwidth from two up to seven. Uh, another uh, design uh, hybrid technique, this means we can also combine a dielectric resonator with a slot antenna and also we come up with uh, uh, a large bandwidth, you can see it here. And this is another combination. And also identity with the hybrid technique, this means dielectric and microstrip. This means you have, uh, this is the patch resonator and you have a direct resonator. This means we, we can combine a uh, uh, direct resonator with other antenna with micro strip or with wire antenna and the results can give a huge uh, bandwidth operation. Another widening bandwidth, we can use parasite elements, and you can see this parasite can be direct resonators or can be patch. Now, because I uh, go for application, application just keep the brief. The application of direct resonator, we can find them for mobile communications. We can use it for YLAN, wireless uh, local area network application. For satellite application, if the, the direct resonator have a CP polarization, can use them also for radar system. In this way, we can build some antenna array. And also uh, for the future application, we can consider this for millimeter wave, and which is very, very interesting because we have less loss compared to micro strip antenna. And also we have a good uh, band operating uh, bandwidth. Now this is uh, finish my talk for uh, the first lecture. I know I go more than that, but no problem. I, in the second lecture, I may, may reduce it. 
In this lecture, uh, I give you an overview about dielectric resonator concept and we present and discuss. We give you a different feeding technique for dielectric uh, resonators uh, for linear polarization. Then we present a dual and circular polar design with a different technique. And the last we present uh, the broadband dielectric resonators and also hybrid resonator when we combine dielectric resonator, for example, with a wire antenna or wire micro strip antenna. And we give a brief application of this antenna in wireless application or in radar system. This is uh, conclude and finish my first lecture. And maybe take five minutes and they will start the second lecture. Thank you very much okay. for uh, attention. And I okay. hope you, you get something. But yeah. uh, at least uh, you understand what is microstrip, what is the uh, dielectric resonators, and how to feed them. And if you are interested for research, I think it is still a very interesting topic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. You what may have five minutes back. Five minutes, just I take uh, some rest and yeah. come back. Okay, okay, no problem. Let, let me start the second uh, the second lecture.
Hi, uh, Professor. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Can I start? Uh, the yeah, yeah, one? yeah, yeah. You can start. Yeah. Good uh, afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, Professor, for interrupting. How much time you will take to finish this one? Because uh, after after your session, third lecture is also there. No, I will uh, uh, because maybe I will finish early in time. No problem. Okay, okay. In, in thirty minutes, I will finish. Okay, okay. It's up to you, no problem. Okay, okay. 30, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, no problem. Yeah, just when uh, you can mention me five minutes at the end. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Okay, I can start? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Welcome in this uh, lecture, this lecture about reconfigurable antenna for 5G wireless communication system. I have divided this uh, presentation in three sections. Introduction, where I give an overview about 5G wireless system. What is the impairment and the problem for this system? And I also I give an overview about conventional smart antenna array that we could use for uh, 5G and what is their problem and how in the second part, we speak about dielectric resonator antenna with reconfigurable radiation pattern. But to before to present this antenna, I present EBG structure and their application and how to use this EBG structure to design a new dielectric resonator antenna with reconfigurable radiation pattern. I and I will finish with conclusion. This lecture is different than the previous one, which focus now about the configurability of radiation pattern and how to use it in wireless communication system, especially for 5G. But before to speak about the antenna, we speak why we speak about antenna. Antenna generally is the key element for wireless communication system. Now, our wireless communication is omnipresent everywhere. No, everybody now use this technology. Now your telephone can be used for phone, camera, GPS, MP3, DVD, and it can be also used at PC. And in now this with this service and this product, a lot of demands in terms of bandwidth and in terms of uh, uh, service are needed. But the key element for wireless uh, communication system is the antenna. Antenna is the eyes and the ears of any wireless communication system. And if you, you like your wireless communication system work well, you should choose the right antenna for this system. Because this the, is the first element in the chain of design of any wireless communication system, especially for the next generation. But before to speak antenna, I will give you an overview about the 5G. In the 5G, there is a huge market potential for this technology 5G. The 5G uh, is, is used for uh, communication everywhere with everybody and every application. And we need, uh, we look to achieve a transmission speed more than one gig byte per second, which is a huge. And one particularity, one very specific uh, property of the 5G compared to the previous generation is we look for connecting object. All the previous generation uh, focus in connecting between people. And this connecting can be the voice, uh, video, image, text, everything, but between people. Now, with the 5G, we they like to communicate the object. What's mean the object? This means we can use this wireless communication in transportation. This means cars can co connect to each other to avoid maybe accidents or to to minus the traffic and so we can also use it in in plane uh, in wireless network 
We can use it in uh, healthcare. We can use it uh, in uh, personal communication. This means the idea, and also we can use it in cities, wireless cities, for many services. This means, and also for a plant, for example, we have some robot, and this robot should be communicated to, to each other and to optimize the production. And so this means in the future, many objects are connected to each other and maybe communicate smartly. And maybe they don't need human being, which is create a new era in wireless communication. And but to include all these uh, demands and all these services, maybe we need to go in high frequency, especially at millimeter wave. The microwave band is saturated and we can add for everything. And one thing we, which is very important, and I like to mention it for 5G, is connecting object, IoT. And just here we give a history about the wireless communication system. This started in the 80s with the first generation when we can have a phone and voice. And the system at this time, it was analog. Then we go in 19 for a second generation, then third generation, fourth generation, and now we work for the 5G. In the 5G, we need a huge bandwidth in order to achieve this capacity and this uh, spectral efficiency. And uh, if you are interested, there are one word from Rappaport, I think is a book, Millimeter Wave Wireless Mobile Communication for 5G published in 2014, but it's still useful for the people who are interested about this area. Why for, for why I speak about wireless communication? Because very important, we can ask why we design antenna, why we have to go for a new antenna, because we need them for this new generation. Now, just I give a picture uh, about uh, the phone about the first, second, third, and you can see the evolution of antenna. And the first one is one antenna. We can see it outside. Now the antenna is embedded in the 2G, in the 3G, and so on. And maybe dialect television also we can embed it inside the inside the, the handset and then the 5G or even 6G. Now I present the spectrum for uh, communication system. We can see here at yeah, the band of 6G, which is used now, but this band is uh, crowded and is not sufficient to include all service needed in 5G. People, they like to move in this band, we call it millimeter wave. Generally, millimeter will start from 30 gig up to 300 gig, but generally we can go less to roughly from 24, and especially this band around 28, which is considered for the next generation of 5G. We can go also with 37, 42, and 60, but when you go up, we have a lot of uh, path loss, and we can go for uh, uh, big cells. But 28 is the best candidate at this band and which should compromise between in terms of frequency and bandwidth and also in terms of loss. This means many work to many groups work to develop some system around this band or other band maybe here. But 60 is used in the past, but still very huge loss. But all this band is a candidate up to 100 years. Now, at uh, this frequency, which is give us a huge uh, operating spectrum at millimeter wave, but we have a huge issue at millimeter wave, which is the path loss between, sorry, between the transmitter and receiver. And we can see it from a freeze equation. This loss depends in the frequency. And when your frequency is high, this loss is very high. In this way, to overcome this loss, 
people they use some specific antenna to compensate the loss here. This means if we increase the gain of the transmitting antenna and the gain of receiving antenna, maybe we compensate this path loss at high frequency. What's mean when you bug the problem when you use a high gain uh, transmitting and receiving? This is good for a fixed point to point. But for mobile, when your mobile move, your antenna is not efficient directly. This means you, you lose. This way, what we need, we need antenna with high gain, but with a dynamic radiation pattern. This means radiation pattern can, can be narrow, with high gain, but move. This means can track the transceiver. And this can be achieved by beam steering antenna or beam scanning or smart antenna or a configurable antenna uh, that can follow the receiver. And this is the next generation of uh, advanced antenna for 5G. Also another problem at wireless communication is the multipath. Multipath can here, for example, you have base station, you have a receiver, you have the receiver and one of the receiver is this path combined and you can generate a fluctuation in the received uh, signal and to compensate and to resolve this problem generally we use a smart antenna or phase antenna array or antenna with a reconfigurable radiation pattern. This is the problem. There are two problems. One is the passwords. The second problem is multipath which is uh, challenging and we like to resolve this problem by using advanced antenna. This is why we go for smart antenna. Smart antenna, this means at the base station, you can create beams here and the beams can connect with the user. And this, and we don't transmit here energy because we don't need it. If you use omnidirectional antenna in a less conventional way, if the gain is low, but you cover some region you don't need it. This way is better to use a smart antenna or a reconfigurable antenna with some EBG structure. And this is we have two solutions. The conventional one is a smart antenna. Right, the second we that we present is reconfigurable antenna. And in smart antenna, what means this means uh, we use antenna array that can shape its radiation pattern to follow the wound signal. And if there are some inter interference, we create some nulls in your radiation pattern in order to eliminate them or to filter them. And in this application, we can see, for example, at the base station, we have smart antenna and we can create multi beam for the user. In this way, we can increase the quality of transmitting between the base station and the user. The same here, uh, here we can go use this also antenna for space division, multiple access, use different radiation band. The advantage uh, of this smart antenna, we can increase the signal range. We eliminate the interference signal and we combat, uh, combat or avoid signal fading from multipath. And at the end, we can increase the capacity of wireless system because we improve the signal to noise ratio. This is the advantage. And how to build this antenna? We have two ways. The antenna with a switched beam and antenna with adaptive beam. Here, just uh, the design of this antenna, we can use this antenna and we have some weighting here and different, uh, different. we have antenna array and we have the beam former and sometimes we optimize this antenna in terms of output power or minimize quadratic errors between the desired signal and the reference or to maximize signal to noise ratio is depends in the criteria that we use. Or we can use also 
associated beam. This means we have a beam forming here and the red is generally beam forming. Beam forming can be a Nolan matrix, blast matrix, or Bassel matrix. And the idea is to generate multi beam and we choose only the beam that we need. Here is the blue one, the, the selected beam, and the other beam we don't select. I mean, for example, if you have uh, if you have uh, the user in this direction, we choose this beam. Then when you or the user move, we go for the next beam and so on. And this generally based in some beam forming network such as Nolan or Plus or Bath and Matrix. Here I give the example of Bathroom matrix for a four element. This basic general use across uh, hybrid uh, power divider, your phase shifter and crossover. And when we have we come up with a network and this network generate, for example, four beams. And this is very well uh, known this network to generate beam forming. And here just to give an example of uh, this design, you can see the patch antenna, four elements. And here we have a battle matrix, and this work is fabricated and designed, and we can see have four beams in simulation way, and also for measurement, and we can see this is just prove the proposal concept that we can generate beams by using battle matrix. Another work uh, from other work uh, from Rubias and his group, they use also this uh, phase shifter to create beams. They have four elements and there are here circuits to control the phase and uh, the amplitude to, for this phase shift. Just an example for that. The problem with the the problem with this technique, we need antenna array. This is an antenna array require complex beam forming and generally is expensive. And also for phase and the same thing. To avoid this, for us, we propose another solution is just to use the periodic electromagnetic band gap, one with active element and with the dielectric resonator. This means we use a single antenna which is dielectric resonator antenna. And we surround this dielectric resonator with EBG structure. This means because this solution become cheaper than the previous one, and we have only one feeding and one receive. And it is not complex in terms of feeding, and we have only a single feed. But before to speak about this uh, dielectric resonator with our computer pattern, I give you an overview about EBG structure that we use as a tool to control the radiation pattern for dielectric resonator. Yeah, this is the functionality. We improve the functionality of dielectric. We enhance the transmission quality, and we save energy by directing the desired the signal to the user. This is the same for array or for a single. Array. Now I go for the EBG structure. What is EBG structure? Electronic band gap structure are structure that can either block or allow wave propagation regarding the frequency, the incidence angle, or the wave band. At the end, we allow the band, we have a gap band where we stop this. The idea by using this structure, EBG, is to control the wave propagation. In some way, in some band, we let the energy pass, for example, through this structure. In some frequency, we like to block the propagation. This means we let the energy pass or we block it by using this structure. And I explain, explain you how to use this structure can be used to control the wave propagation. Here, this structure, first of all, can be Stuck it, dielectric layers can be also in 2D, like a dielectric or metallic roads EBG, or can be in 3D, like wood pile EBG. This means the structure can be periodic in 1D or 2D or 3D. And the idea 
to build this structure is to control the propagation who pass through uh, through the structure. Sometimes we will lack the energy pass. Some some frequency will lack this energy reflected back to the transmitter. And which is very, very important uh, feature that we can use it for designing uh, some antenna and to resolve some problem in antenna design. This is just uh, some example also for 1D, 2D, 3D. This material is dependent on the periodicity between, between the period, the materials, and the permittivity of the material uh, of, and the angle of incidence. And at the end, this structure looks like a frequency filter or space filter, and also can be directing element or polarization filter. This means we can use them, this structure for different application. We can use them as a filter. We can all also use them as a space filter. This means the filter is depends on the angle of incidence or sometimes we use them to focus the energy in some direction. And, and the last, we can use them to filter some polarization. For example, we let some vertical polarization pass, but horizontal is a block. This is like, and here we see the gap, generally dispersion, uh, the diagram of uh, this period. This means at this band, there is no propagation. And here, just summarize the ABG structure. It is a composite material. This means it is artificial. It's not, we can find them in nature, but we can build them by using some periodic structure like mushroom and so on. And they exhibit stop band where no electromagnetic propagation is allowed. Uh, the EBG also found uh, to have a frequency band where incident wave is reflected with zero degrees reflection. This means you can use them as a, a perfect uh, magnetic art, uh, wall or conductor, PMC. Yes. Uh, now, at this I give the example for the EBG structure. We can see here some periodic structure. And we have the incident wave, reflected wave, and transmitted wave. And if we measure the transmission coefficient, we can see the wave pass at this band, pass at this band, but at this band, which is called forbidden band, the wave is reflected back. And this depends how many layers. If you, this is for, for one layer, two layer, and three layer. If this means if you use many layers, we can achieve a very forbidden band, and this band can be reflected. The other band can be passed. And in this way, this structure looks like a filter. But this element can be also tuned. Sometimes if we tune it, we can control this band. Here, just another structure. How to measure this or to characterize this uh, periodic structure, we have a symmetric wave, transmitted wave. It's just to explain the phenomena of uh, this uh, periodic structure. And the idea of uh, EBG structure it come from this concept, what they call the frog mirror, which is here. At some frequency, this structure become reflected. And other frequency can be uh, transmissible. This is uh, in this way we can use this structure to control the propagation of electromagnetic wave. Here we can see in this example some measurement of reflection coefficient. And this means when the reflection coefficient is near zero dB, this means the structure is reflected. Here the energy pass. We can think in terms of reflection coefficient or in transmission coefficient. The same thing here, good transmission, and here, weak transmission. This means they represent the stop band gap of this structure. And we can control this band with sometimes we can put it in dual way. Here, an example of, uh, of this periodic structure, we can see 
a mushroom here, which is like a patch and with a via. And here we present the equivalent circuit for that. And if we calculate the surface impedance of this structure, we can see at some frequency the impedance has become infinity, using there are no current or no propagation. This means the resonance come from from lamped element and beer, and the, the period must be much smaller than wavelength. No problem, uh, and also at the resonance frequency, when we have some level, there is no propagation. This work is done by Sundan Paper, uh, by a PhD thesis at USLA in 1999. If you are interested in this mushrooms approach and how to design. Here in our group, we design the uh, same uh, structure with the EBG structure with the patch. We can see here just a disk instead hexagonal. And this is the via. And here the, det the details of these mushrooms. We can see the mushrooms, the dielectric constant in here. And there are uh, different parameters of uh, this design is just for the unit cell. And how to hear, how to measure this setup, for example, is uh, the structure. We have the transmit wave, we me uh, measure the reflected wave. And from this, we can me me measure the uh, reflect reflection coefficient or the transmission wave. This just to explain how to measure the EBG structure and to see their property in some frequency. Here, the real measurement, we can see these two antenna, the structure is here, and these two antenna is connected to, to the network analyzer to measure the S parameter, and from this S parameter, we calculate or determine reflection coefficient, and we can characterize this EBG structure. Here uh, we built and published this uh, EBG structure at millimeter wave, and we can see this the structure and here the input and the input, and we do measurement. We come up with these results. We have a simulation measurement, and we see at 60 gig that the structure is opaque or is a gap. There is no transmission. And another structure also, which is uh, EBG with another shape. We have this, and we fabricate it like this, and we can see the gap at this frequency. It's just to show you uh, about this periodic structure and how to characterize like them. Now we go for the application. The application of EBG for the array can be in three ways. We can use them. To, re to reduce mutual coupling between the electric resonator antenna array. Another uh, application of uh, these structures can be used to improve the gain of the electric resonator. And the last and not the least, we can use this structure to create and to design the electric resonator with a reconfigurable pattern or with a beam state. This means we can explore this uh, technology to improve our design in three ways. I give you a few examples for each application. Here, for example, we you have two dielectric resonators, and this dielectric resonator maybe can be used in an array or it can be used in a minor system. And we know that when these dielectric resonators they have some mutual coupling between these two elements. In order to reduce the coupling between these elements, we can install an EBG structure. And this EBG structure should have a band gap at the operating frequency. This means there is no propagation from here to here. And this, by this way, we kill or eliminate the mutual cap coupling between these two antennas. This one uh, major application of uh, these uh, EBG structures. And we fabricate this structure. We can see the photo, just periodic structure. And we measure 
the S1, S2, 1, here without EBG and here without, with EBG. We can see that we can improve the mutual coupling between these two uh, to the DRA. This is the response of this EBG. Now you see these two dielectric resonators. And by the way, these dielectric resonators working at 60 gig. You see the connector is huge compared to uh, the resonator. And this is, there is no, uh, there is no mutual uh, EBG here without here EBG. And here the EBG structure. And here we use an EBG between these two DRA. First, we design it without, and the second, we add, and we compare them. And we can see with EBG and without EBG, and we can see that uh, this is represent S11. Let me see. And this is S21. This without, you can see. And this with the EBG, and we can see that if we introduce an EBG structure between these direct resonators, we can improve usually the, the isolation, which is S21. This one application, and here just the, the radiation pattern, we can see with and without in each plate. Just uh, let me see. Here also, uh, the gain of the antenna, the proposal and simulate, let me see. Here another, I go quickly for uh, another uh, improved application of the EBG that we can use um, EBG as EMC reflector to improve the gain. Here the dielectric resonators and we have the slot here, the free microstrip line, and we add here a reflector based in EBG. And we can see here the, the antenna, the feeding, we fabricate this, and here are the results, FS11. We can see this antenna work um, at uh, between 50, at 60 gig, and we compare to, with the reference elements. And now is the radiation pattern. You can see because we use the EMC, we reduce usually uh, the backlog here at the H plane and E plane. This is oh my goodness. This is uh, without EMC. This with EMC. And we were for the uh, for uh, the, the other plane, we can see also. Just uh, this is a perfect background measurement simulation and the reference element you see here. And here we see the, the gain versus the frequency for the proposed antenna measuring the simulation. This is also we compare our antenna with the perfect uh, electric uh, conductor and with the reference. This means we have this with EBG. This is with a metallic conductor and this without. And we can see that this electromagnetic band gap can be used to improve the gain of dielectric resonance. Now I go for the reconfigurable uh, antenna, which is the third application. The idea we have a dielectric resonators here, which is source, and we surround this dielectric with EBG structure in order to switch or to move or to modify its radiation pattern. And by this concept, we come up with a reconfigurable dielectric resonator antenna with a dynamic radiation pattern. And here, yes, we can switch from one section to another, or we can, in this way, we can come up with directive or with only direction, it depends and how to build this structure around the structure, uh, around the dielectric resonators. And here, just an example of uh, uh, radiation pattern when we have directive and when we have only direction mode. This is uh, the structure that we use.
to control the radiation pattern of the direct resonator antenna. And that details also given in our paper if you are interested. And in this, just how to switch this EPG structure. We have a grid to fill them. And the idea is just to make them transmissible or uh, forbidden gap. This means they let the energy pass or they block the, the energy. And the design is given here. We have the dielectric we resonate on Michelin land slot. We feed it like it. And we surround it with EBG structure. This means we have six sections. And this section can be controlled by a varactor. This means we can let the energy pass by controlling this this structure. This structure can be have to behave like a, a reflector or like a, a transparent. It depends how to feed this EBG structure. This means, this means if I open here and I block the energy from around, I have radiation from this direction. If I open here, I have direction of uh, propagation. The idea is to control the radiation pattern in different uh, direction. And this looks like a beam forming, but at the advantage, we have only a single element. And the radiation beam scanning is controlled by the structure that surround the structure, the, the antenna. Here, the feeding the transmission line, the, the slot, and the circuit that uh, control uh, the EBG structure. And here we have some switch diodes that we put them. And this is the four EBG. This EBG can be open or closed by controlling some with uh, some structure. And here is the EBG and the same thing. Transmit is the feeding. Just uh, let me see this is the to feed the dielectric is here. Oh my god. This is the feeding of the antenna. And all this circuit with the switch here control the EBG structure. And this structure can be open or closed by switching some diodes here. And this each uh, structure is looked like a cluster. Now, I give you the, the, the prototype. Prototype, we see here are dielectric resonators. We have behind the feeding, and this is the EBG structure. And we have this diode, and each diode control one cluster. And this cluster can be open or closed. For example, if I like have radiation from this direction, I block all these structures, they become reflective, they work in a band gap, and this switch to transmitter band. This means the energy go the other side. And in this way, we can create six different beams. We can switch between them. And this is the switch. We present some results. First, we present uh, the, the S11. You can see this antenna cover the band around 60 gig. And we have measured and simulation. And we have we use also a reference antenna, just uh, alone. And here, for example, we, we open this window for this direction. This means you have radiation better in this direction. And this all looks like reflect. And here just two dots, uh, two, two, two part, four and five. Another section here to another combination, we can see that we switch the radiation pattern in this direction. Then we can switch the radiation the other side. And the last, we can have radiation pattern in another angle. 
And the idea with this direct resonator, we can switch radiation pattern in different uh, direction by using a single direct resonator, but with some appropriate EBG. This means combination tunable EBG structure with direct resonator, we can come up with reconfigurable radiation pattern theory. This is the idea that explain how to use EBG with dielectric resonator to design uh, the array with a dynamic radiation pattern. It's just give you an overview. If you are interested, this work is published in IEEE last year with uh, Mr. Moad and myself. Now I finish uh, uh, my talk because it seems I don't have a lot of time. In this second lecture, we saw the millimeter wave for uh, connecting people and things, the future wireless communication, especially 5G. And we saw some, how to use some millimeter wave bandwidth, you know, 28 or up to 60 for the next uh, generator to, uh, to accommodate and uh, to answer uh, the demand in terms of uh, spectrum of this new millimeter wave present some impairment of this system in terms of path loss and multipath, and how to resolve this problem by using a smart antenna or a cover antenna. I present a little bit overview about EBG structure and how to use them to improve the design of dielectric antenna in terms of uh, gain, isolation, or uh, beam sweeping. And la lastly, and not least, I present a configurable dielectric resonator antenna with dynamic radiation pattern using EBG. This is uh, conclude my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. And if there is question, we can discuss. Thank you very much. I know I passed my time. <coughs> I take 10 minutes more, but uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor, for a nice delivery of, of informative session. And quickly, I'm passing on some queries from the participants because we are running uh, late by 10 minutes. What are the uh, like uh, radiation hazards of 5G? Uh, can you repeat your question? What are the radiation hazards of 5G? I think uh, the, the problem for hazard uh, from antenna at 5G or micro is the same. People sometimes they speak some speculation about 5G is dangerous. 5G is not dangerous. It depends. The problem if you uh, use some base station and your antenna is near, for example, you transmit huge power and you are near this uh, base station, here there are some problems, even at microwave. Okay. Not uh, 5G. And uh, the penetration of the energy is more uh, uh, important at low frequency than high frequency. The human being, the tissue of a human being reflect, they don't absorb uh, high frequency. The more problem is with the low frequency. But the problem with the 5G, if they use a small unit cell, the potential, this means they install a base station everywhere near the people. This means the, the problem come from if you are close to the base station and this base station has some high power to transmit, for example, 10 watt or 100 watt. But if the base station is far away, there is no problem. The same thing for microwave. If you allow the company to install a base station on the roof of your house, don't ask me. <laughs> you understand? Yes, yes. Because 5G, they work now, they have two generations. The one they call for sub six gig because they don't go for millimeter wave. But in the future, they expect 28 or up to 38, what 60 depends. But the problem is the power, it's not the frequency. Okay. If the power is very huge near you, it's dangerous. Okay. Uh, the next query is why microstick be, be, micro based coupling is frequently used in DRA? 
Uh, can you uh, repeat it again? Why microstick based coupling is used in DRA? Uh, microstick coupling uh, without, because I think it's um, more easier than other uh, technique because you have directly the transmission line, if I understand the question, and you couple to your resonator. You don't need to include another slot <coughs> or another complicated uh, feeding. Okay. Uh, with this, we are extremely thankful of you for your overall content delivery in these two consecutive sessions. And thank you once again for accepting our invitation too. And uh, have a nice day there. Be healthy and stay safe due to this ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you once again. Yeah, from my side, welcome. And also yeah. I thank all uh, the audience for their uh, participation. And I hope one day maybe uh, we can see you physically. Sure, and maybe sure. Maybe we can come to India, why not? Yeah, sure, and, sure. And uh, we hope uh, we pass this difficult and challenging time of the COVID. And at the end, keep yourself safe and see you in another event. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Or have okay, a good night, you. by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, now you can stop uh, presentation. Stop okay, presenting. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Uh, for the last lecture of today's session, uh, Professor Bhaskar Gupta will continue in continuation with the yesterday lecture. Uh, without further making any statement, I am directly inviting. Professor Bhaskar Gupta to start the session. Hello. Are you hearing me, sir? Uh, thank you. Okay, okay. I also want to waste no more time because we are already late and it's in any case quite late. Hello, hello. Can you y yes, can yes, you we hear me or yes. can you? Yes, we can hear you. Carry on. Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Yes, but you yes. can hear me, it seems. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You can start the presentation. You can hear me. Then uh, I, I'm trying to go for a... Uh, Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. Then, the... okay, okay. Give me a minute. I'm presenting the entire screen. Let me see. Yes, but uh, what I'm see that Chrome wants to share the contents of your screen. Choose what you'd like to share. But uh, again, tomorrow, today again, some sort of problem again this is happening same thing okay you, you sharing can... is becoming the problem Not i don't know all. why this sharing is the present uh, present now icon is itself um, on not bottom. activated i don't know can you help me, anybody? Uh, you, you can disconnect oh, no. yourself. You can so rejoin. The is not you can rejoin That's using not the same that icon. What to do? Sir, you can rejoin using the same Google Meet link. You disconnect and you rejoin. It's not getting activated present now. Would I leave and again join? Yes, yes, please. You, you leave and you rejoin again. Oh, you can, it seems it's better to rejoin. Hello? Yes, 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 sir. You can, you, yes, sir. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, yes, I am seeing yes. Yes, sir. 
I'm uh, uh, clicking on present now. Yes, sir. Share yes, sir. screen. Yes. Yes. Okay. Share and cancel. Why the two tabs are share and cancel? The two tabs and the short tab is activated. So again, the same problem. I think it, it should not be there. It should not be there. Yesterday, yes. apart from share, the other one, other tab was hide or something like that. But today, it's a problem. Who was there? Who was there? Telling about this thing, let me cancel and try. something is happening, some problem at this end. Present I'm, now, yes, after sir. that, your entire screen, okay. Uh -huh. Forget mm -hmm. your entire screen, let me try a window. Yes, yes, window, window. Select window, then uh, select window, then okay. Then again, yes. Share and cancel, share is not activated. Only it's cancel not... is activated. Why is it so? I don't understand. So uh, uh, Dr. Sonic Kiran. Yes, sir. Uh, Could you help him? Yes, uh, sir. You can, uh, sir. In the second window, you can click on the screen. There will be a small screen inside the window. Yeah, a small screen. Okay. Oh, now. You click on. Okay. Thank you. I okay. Yes. Welcome. Yes. Now, now presentation is coming. Okay. Now I'll just go to my screen. The presentation I want to present. Okay. Just give me one minute then. I'll just open that up. Can you see the presentation now? No. Blank. Blank screen is there. The, I have started. Uh, is it not coming as yet? I have started this presentation just like yesterday. It is blank, blank it screen is, is there. It is blank, blank email. Why you, is you, it not coming? This, uh, sir, this you, you, you select. Going back. Is the presentation open in your system? I am presenting to everyone, but. Yeah, in this screen, I, I can't see anything. Okay. I selected that. You, okay. you select the yeah. presentation. Yes. Let me try again. Uh, I am uh, opening the presentation once again. Once again. Is it uh, is it now okay? Not, not at all. Not at all. Only blank blank screen is 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 coming yeah, yeah, here. The, I selected that and everything is just you are presenting to everyone. Uh, okay, so that's it. But I am uh, opening up that presentation once again. You still can't see that? No, no, we cannot see anything. From my screen? No, it is blank. Uh, sir, you may follow the same Not space, uh, but instead of sharing a window, you can share the entire screen. Oh, then you open the presentation. Coming. Very strange, I don't get it. But you see, what happens is. Uh, Means.google.com is sharing a window. It's written here. Okay, there are two icons stop sharing and hide. And then I hide again. Hide, hide, yes. And then I go to that to slide again. That's like so. Yeah. Very strange. And I don't know. I don't know. But I am. You. Huh? Sir, I think there is some problem when uh, oh, you choose okay, the, yes, the window. The entire uh, screen, then I, uh, go and share. Stop presenting this one. Sir, 
सर यू मे सजेस्ट यस यस डायरेक्टली आई एम मेकिंग कॉल टू सेंड द पीपीटीज टू मी यस सर otherwise in case he is presenting you can ask him to share the entire screen then he show any open no no right? yesterday the problem was resolved sir 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 you do one thing you you oh no no sir you you, you do one thing you can mail those ppts to me i will open here i will share and you can directly talk okay okay okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. because i lost the connection okay so okay maybe you you select entire screen then that select that particular window yes yes window then uh, yes you are presenting your screen yes, yes. it will be coming i now. think so is it uh, coming let's check can you check now yes 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 it is coming is it coming you <laughs> oh, at that time, when I got the same procedure. You know what happened is that I lost sir, the connection. So sir, that's why, na. Sometimes we call wireless communication is unreliable. <laughs> anyway, so that was two yes, words again. Sir, sir, you hide hide the bottom icon. That uh, hide that one. Yeah, and yes, 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 yes. Okay, sir. Now, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. That. Thank you. Okay. Then yes. I think everything is okay. Sorry for the interruption. Hmm. In any case, we are almost half an hour late. So today I'll try to be as brief as possible. This is part two of my talk. Okay. This is a essentially on. Analysis. analysis that is for different vr uh, structure it starts with an approximate analysis so by vr Although approximate, it is giving better results than most of the theories presented earlier. Why? Let's have a look at the rectangular BRA, IBRA. This was read, and Taimur just now asked a question: Why uh, Microsoft Fed is used most commonly? You see, otherwise it can be probe fed also. But in that case, modeling of probe of feeding, you do to you. Uh, you get the rectangular DRA as shown in this figure. The coordinate axes are also shown. The eigen functions i, y direction, y direction, transverse to y direction, the m and p modes. M and p means three uh, mode indices corresponding to the um, variation of cycle variations along the three directions. See, this is different from patch. In case of patch. we consider the height to be extremely small extremely thin we justify that's not the case here we have a considerable height along the z axis so that there is some network issue there that side he has left the sir you may call to sir otherwise he may keeps on presenting there yes that's i am calling हेलो
he is trying to reconnect again there is network issue that side Okay. Am I here again? So I am starting again. Is the slides so visible? Slides visible, sir. Yes. Is it yes, visible yes. now? Slides are visible. You... Am I yes, visible? sir. You are audible as well as you are visible, sir. You can start. Am I visible? Yes, sir. You are visible. You are audible. I don't know what happened. Oh, my God. Slide is visible. Then it's okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. That's why you are not watching. I was, that is because I have already gone to the presentation mode. So I think you have heard this much about the IPN. Yeah, yeah, forget it. The, this is about. Did you, did I show this slide? Did you hear about PMC and IPMC? Let me briefly say that once again. IPMC means imperfect magnetic coil. Sir, make when, it. Uh, there is not a, a perfect magnetic coil in the. Sir, make it slideshow. Means that for a patch antenna along the vertical sides, you get a magnetic coil that is. Transverse magnetic field is assumed to be zero. The assumption is that not in the slideshow. It is very, very small, very thin. The substrate is very thin. That's for patch antennas. That's a substantial. So that we have modified IPMC magnetic wall. Why the magnet of these directions are no along Y direction? Yes. Yes, please. I is that okay? Then let me have slide. Yes. I think uh, then it's okay now. So I'm continuing. It's in slideshow, is it not? It's in slideshow. You check once again. I don't know what's happening. It yes, it is. It, slideshow. No, no, it I is okay now. Response. It is. Uh, it not? is okay now. Is it in slideshow? Yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Can everybody see me again? Again, I lost my connection. And I'm trying again. Yes, sir. You try again to connect, reconnect. I 
I am trying again. I am trying again because you see, every time I am losing the connection. Is it okay now? See, can you see the slideshow? Can you see? Are the slides visible? Yes. Yes, sir. Slides are visible. Make yes. it slideshow. Okay. So, so I start the slideshow. Okay, very good. Very good. So I go back to slideshow. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So now I start again. Again, I go back to the analysis slide. Uh, yeah, here. As I was explaining, I uh, we considered perfect magnetic wall along x and z directions as usual, but along y direction, imperfect magnetic wall. I already explained the reason. I don't want to waste my time for that. Imperfect means the magnetic field will not be totally normal there, but it will have some transverse component as well. You can I can refer you to the paper which is uh, written as which is given at the bottom for kx and ky. We uh, apply usual the usual cavity model, and for ky, kx and kz, sorry, for ky, we use the transcendental equation as shown so that the eigenfunction is in the form of sine or cosine type of trigonometric functions. This was uh, derived by us rigorously, and then using that, we have investigated uh, such a rectangular DRA for different modes. You see the theoretically predicted resonant frequencies, which are agreeing quite well with the measured values. All measurements were taken by us. And uh, we have checked it with some uh, values given by others also, like Liung and like uh, Liung and Luke. You see the two papers, reference 176 and 177. In both cases, we found from there some experimental values, and we uh, also uh, generated our theoretical values. That was again in close agreement. But as regards this Luke and Liu's paper and Pan and Liu's paper, they used, they did not show any detailed theoretical calculation, but they used some relation which we found to be probably due to some typographical error uh, containing some mistakes. So we rectified it and we got all accurate results. The radiation patterns also we, co we then uh, computed based on that, essentially based on equivalence principle. The uh, field internal field was expanded so that we got the equivalent currents, electric and magnetic, on the different walls. Obviously, because our magnetic uh, wall was imperfect, we had both types of currents. And then using that, we found the radiated fields. See, they are given here. And compared with some measured data by Petrosa, one of the pioneers in uh, this field, whose paper was published in uh, Transactions IP in 2011. And we measured by ourselves also. Interestingly, the measured data shows much better agreement with our theory than Petrosa's theory. Because, uh, then, because uh, you see, uh, they made the same mistake. And because one mistake was uh, being propagated, till we corrected it. I'm not going into the detail. I refer you to that paper as shown here. But you can as well notice how the side lobes could be found could be obtained using our theory only, neither by Petrosa nor by anyone else. We also computed the input impedance. These are standard relations. You know, the current uh, on the probe was first modeled, as is shown here. And from there, the input impedance was computed in the standard way. So every, uh, every term is explained here. Uh, some of the terms are obvious, so that's why they are not given. QT is the total resonance factor, it is a, a total quality factor, sorry. Omega naught is the complex resonance frequency. Uh, more or less, people familiar with circuitry are well familiar with this, and familiar with electromagnetics, they are well familiar with this. But we using these, we then tried to find out, we then tried to extend our investigation to input impedance 
We took the data as measured by McAllister's paper and Shane Long. Just say yesterday I told you that it was the path-breaking paper, the pioneering paper. And uh, obviously, at the time, simulators were not there. Now we have those simulators. We have found, interestingly, that the theory developed by us is much closer to the measured data. And obviously, so is HFS simulation rather than Long's work. But Long's work uh, pointed to one thing that we still find validated that resonance for DRA shouldn't be obtained from zero crossing of reactor. Rather, maximization of the resistance value. This is once again because of non zero variation along the height. For more details, I refer you to these two papers. The first one is also available in Explore and in URSI Regional Conference. Uh, prize, second prize was also obtained by the research scholar at that time. Now, now he teaches in NIT Raurkela, Shudip Tomaiti. And then I come to uh, some innovation of ours, that is horizontally innovogenous RDRA, which was not investigated by anyone at all. We did it, innovogenous means we use two different types of materials, see the sandwiching connection, and then we applied a similar type of theory that is using both PMC and IPMC and using the same concept. But this time, in order to reduce the complexity, we rather took up the mode matching approach. Uh, the detail of the Huygens functions are put at the bottom in uh, the different regions. Why is one minus one is outside? Why is V2 means the outside to the right? And in between in the two regions. So using that Huygens function, as you can see here, RDRA1 refers to first region uh, using the involving the first substrate, this one, and RDRA2 is the second region involving the second substrate. You get the eigenfunction, and from there, you compute alpha and beta attenuation and phase constants, as shown here. Now, using all this, what you have to do is, you have to match the modal fields at the different boundaries. Minus B1, that is on the left hand boundary, zero, that is at the point of sandwiching the two left substrate, and at B2 means at the right hand boundary. And on matching the fields, you get the, uh, all the fields, and they're from every data as is uh, computed by mode matching technique for any antenna. You see, these are the results for experimental validation of resonant frequency. You have uh, an error percentage is I think acceptable and these are the once again the comparison of theory and measurement in case of uh, radiation pattern pattern was computed as before using equivalence principles and thereby generating the equivalent electric and magnetic surface currents the most interesting point is why did we extend our earlier work to this inhomogeneous scale because this can give us a wide tuning range. Change the thickness of one of the substrates. You get a variation. See, from a from five less than five gigahertz to more than eight gigahertz, covering almost a huge region in the L as well as in the in the sorry in the C band. So this tuning is possible. That gives a huge applicability. And that's why this innovation is important, which was reported in AEU in April 2017. Already I mentioned of Shudita Maiti, he did this work. Right? The next part will be devoted to the cylindrical shape. I start with cylindrical or dielectric waveguide and then go to cylindrical dielectric resonator because waveguide is uh, an isolated structure. A resonator is closed at the ends. So let's uh, go through them one by one. This is a cylindrical coordinate chosen. And this is a geometry for analyzing the cylindrical dielectric waveguide. So 
for this structure, once again, if we take three modal indexes, T to Z and TM to Z mode fields can be expanded straight away by solving Maxwell's equation as shown. It's very simple. Just uh, using the T and TM mode generator potentials and uh, uh, using the cylindrical coordinate system. Then we go once again by mode matching. Matching We go for matching fields at rho equal to M. Uh, that means on the surface of the waveguide, we get a transcendental equation as shown. This F1, F2 minus F3 square. Detail of the derivation are there in my our paper. I'm just telling you the principle. But what we observe is something very interesting. Well, for such cylindrical waveguides, we got very little work before us, very little number of references. One of the references was by Darko Kaifel, another pioneer who uh, gave the two figures for two values of dielectric constant. Again, another interesting mistake, which was pointed out before our work itself. The, he worked for epsilon 20 and 38. But while reporting, uh, somehow the journal also, uh, they are in, the, in the book also, they did not notice that the two curves got interchanged. By uh, epsilon 20, he represented 38 curves. By epsilon 38, he represented the 20 curves. But that was corrected by Bellanis in his book on advanced antenna engineering, uh, electromagnetic, sorry. And uh, Bell, but still, both of them, in spite of showing the first 12 modes, missed a mode, the HEM32 mode. Why did they miss the mode? The answer is simple because they went for uh, approximate analysis, the mistake of which. We pointed out already, and they relied on the initial result, initial result. We went through this rigorous analysis as shown. So we got the mode. We got all the modes correctly. See that HEM32 mode. That is not shown by either Bellanis or by Kaifel. And we, uh, in order to compute the radiated field, uh, we also uh, had the ignited field. Plotting is uh, as shown. You see, that's at the end, and uh, the complete modal chart of CWC, DWG, where all these mistakes are pointed out, and the real correct modal charts are presented, was published in September 2018 in IET Electronic Status. But then we came to the dielectric resonator. You see, when one end is permeated, that's a resonator, and that way, when it radiates, we get a DRA. Usually, in order to excite it, you have to mount it on the ground plane. So during analysis, we also consider its image and we replace the ground plane so the height is doubled. But as such, the ground plane must be there and that has got a very important bearing on all our results, which I'll explain in due time. You see the, uh, the E field, e field components and H field components are as before the, for as regards the expressions. But then let's take the cylindrical DR. We write uh, proper solutions su subjecting it to the proper boundary conditions. Remember that ground plane. So using that ground plane, uh, that means a piece, and using proper boundary conditions, we get eventually the solutions in these regions as before all in terms of the harmonic functions. You see in region one, region four, and then you have this PMC on the top and on the bottom. So every region function is there before you. Only two have been shown. And once again, we consider PMC along the Z direction, IPMC at the Z rho equal to it. That means the radially outer direction exactly on the point of the surface of the dielectric. Again, we get a transcendental equation. J came, these are you know, the basal function and the modified basal function. And uh, with cylindrical geometry, of course, we have to invoke these functions. So how do we go for graphical solution, for general solution for PM to Z, M and P mode? Well, let's take uh, the modes one by one. We would get one separation equation, one that transcendental equation. So the graphical solution 
we do by perform by plotting both of them and noting their points of intersection that gives the solution this is for tm011 of course tm means tm to z mode of uh, the cdr this is for hem225 you see there always there's an interaction which gives us the and similarly we can uh, give us the solution point and similarly we can compute that for graphically for all different modes and we uh, fabricated a prototype also in order to validate our our theory for hem11 delta mode uh, you see with different uh, dimensions and different parameter values as given our measured value was uh, 3.42 gigahertz theoretical 3.489 gigahertz so the difference uh, the error was only minus 1.98 percent and for tm mode tm01 delta mode similarly the error was only minus 2.26 percent good good so far so good so far i believe that's not much a problem and if we go for hcm one one delta mode we also computed our measurements and our i mean sorry their measurements their measure data with our theoretical well actually none of them gave the detailed theory so we had prepared for the first time this detailed rigorous theory and we validated it against their measurement because uh, we also took some measurements as shown we tried we extended it to different modes t01 delta tm01 delta hm113 hm21 delta delta means a fractional modal index hm12 delta so by every time we find that our theory is telling with their measurement although they did not provide the theory so we are now confident about our theory for cylindrical dielectric resonators as well and based on that we have provided a detailed modal chart for different dielectric constants 2 and 79 79 i think is neo 20 is uh, i think uh, quartz for which these are the internal fields uh, i think the reference the paper reference will be given at the end i think somehow it was missed here but uh, then we go for annular stocking of the these you see the two layers without air gaps is there or we can have three layers when we introduce an air gap between the two with this is again a novel structure which we analyzed and reported in internal journal of rf and microcomputer data engineering and the motivation of this work for us was you see neither an analytical nor an empirical model with sufficient accuracy exists for prediction of resonant frequency and none of the available work can guide you to design can provide you with a generic formulation for design not just analysis but design which is necessary absolutely necessary in order to use it and further <coughs> <coughs> excuse me <coughs> analysis of hem mode for annular stack so cylindrical dielectric resonator antenna is absolutely easy. neither analysis nor neither or by any empirical model so we once again took up the kajal well uh, either using the pmc model where every on every side we are having this pmc or this what we call ipmc proposing this at z equal to a and then we try to see which one is better anyway these you can see the ones that we fabricated the antenna we found now let's come to the result comparison of resonant frequency for hem 110 hm 210 or hm 310 mode it's shown here well uh, gradually with pm in case of pmc model the error is increasing up to 5 so let's try ipmc model unfortunately the error came to be even greater even larger if some yes for hem 310 mode same mode with ipmc approximation the error came to as much as 8.6 percent so we were sure that 
it's better to use the PMC model. That means at z equal to h also, a PMC has to be assumed. Why did this thing happen? This thing happened for a very simple reason. Because of the air gap between the two, that caused the magne magnetic field loop like this. So here we got on the top, we get we got a PMC, perfect magnetic wall. In fact, um, whether we want it or not, some uh, small gap would always remain. Sometimes we created it deliberately, sometimes it's remaining there, irrespective of our wish. And that is causing this. PMC is becoming more theoretically justifiable here. So we accepted that. Rather than, although in the earlier cases that was not the case, because we didn't have that air gap, and accordingly, IPMC model was more accurate. So anyway, then we adopted the PMC model, as I explained. These are the different modal patterns, as you can see from here. I mean, for internal field, which was used as before by invoking the equivalence principle to get the far field radiation patterns. These are those patterns, also measured, also measured. And uh, one set generated by us, the other set measured, both copole and cross pole. I don't need to explain. All broadside radiators and uh, theory is closely resembling the measured data. This uh, was published again in Tashal Journal, Journal of RF and uh, Microwave Course Computer Aided Engineering. So let's go to the next part. Well, first rectangular, then we analyze circular shape. So lastly, we take up, this is very interesting, approximate analysis, similar approximate. We call it approximate because uh, in any case, cavity model is approximate one. But nonetheless, our results are more accurate than that. But we, have, in linguistic alert, <laughs> we have to be very accurate. So that's why we call them like this. We analyze. The commonest triangular shape, equilateral triangular, equilateral triangle. Then we analyze 30, 60, 90 triangle, 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree triangle, which is a special case of an isolated isocellus triangle. So all these triangles were used to generate corresponding DRS and analyze. These are the fabricated prototypes. You see, we have fabricated so many and measured each of them. But for any of them, interestingly, there was no modal analysis, either for T mode or TM mode or HEM mode. So obviously, there was no formulation of eigen function and eigen value. And uh, naturally, from there, <coughs> just a minute, <coughs> radiation pattern could not be computed, neither could be computed input impedance, <coughs> quality factor, gain efficiency, bandwidth, nothing. Uh, just uh, one minute, please. Uh, I need a little bit of water. Thank you for your patience. So I remove, resume. So that's why I think this right hand arrow is essentially redundant. We had to meet all these objectives. We had to do our formulation. So uh, you can read uh, all these steps. I think this is I'm um, repeating again and again, and the. Rest, what I can say is that internal, these internal vector magnetic fields are plotted, and the plotting is usual using the conventional gradient method so that we can identify the various modes. And then um, we proceed as before, and finally, we get some closed form expressions that we formulate. This is a equilateral triangular theory. Again, the Eigen function is given here, composed of all these harmonic functions. 
but see the three indices a l a m and n the sum must be zero this is in order to make the geometry amenable to the triangular shape this is through trilinear transformation and uh, the corresponding papers are presented here in the iet paper iet map you get more detailed form uh, in the other one you get the final closed form expressions we uh, shift our attention now to the one which was not even experimentally analyzed by other people like the 30 60 90 degree dra using the pmc model <laughs> and trilinear transformation Again, we formulate the eigenfunctions. We uh, publish this paper in AEU for 45 degree, 48 degree, 90 degree DRA. Also, we publish this again in AEU for general isosceles triangular DRA with any value of the include cone, include cone theta i, which is the same on both sides. Uh, again, we go for a modified trilinear transformation in terms of these angles alpha beta gamma we get a transformation to u v and w in terms of lmn and so that u plus v plus w is equal not equal to zero this is going to form a general formulation for isosceles tdra the formulation is shown here and here is that once again the eigen function but remember this is a perfectly symmetric structure so there can be even more so there can be odd modes with two different forms of the eigen function you see for even mode in cosine form in odd mode in sine form the y variation is like that x variation is uh, both ways symmetric that is cosine and uh, you look at this everything is explained here i am i'm not uh, in order to uh, save time i'm not reading out everything and of course they are available in this paper published in transactions so everything was computed from them as before the internal field patterns first these are for tm to z 113 more and uh, e field h field at different planes and for tm to z 213 mode see so all for different modes and all for different triangles you see this one was for 45 degree 45 degree 90 degree but we already developed a general theory for isosceles triangles so 75 75 and 60 60 60 means equilateral case that general formula actual general theory is catering to all of these uh, which we had uh, derived at the end uh, if we try to check the resonant frequency using this formula so far so good all the radiated fields are being obtained okay nicely because the eigen functions are okay but but there's a problem while trying to find out the resonant frequency interestingly at the low for the lower frequency there was not that much of error uh, from uh, uh, corresponding to measurement, uh, but for sorry, for higher frequency. But if we try other modes, gradually you see more and more error. The measurement is by Ahmed Kish. But why is it that our theory is not being able to satisfy that? We can't, do, uh, we can't uh, uh, deny that. Ahmed Kish is a very good experimenter, so we cannot, uh, we could not denounce his measurement. Something is problem here. So what was the problem? This caused us lots of, uh, lots of difficulty to identify. In fact, we tried our own hand also. Uh, forget about uh, Ahmed Kish's measurement. We used HM as a simulation, and we found that uh, even larger errors as large as almost 28 percent so know the radiation patterns that's after all normalized that's everything is coming properly what's the use of this theory then something uh, must be wrong 
something needs a solution, we then identified what is that solution from, well, going back 50, more, I think more than 60 years, we could identify that. From the original works of Shelkunov, what did Shelkunov show? That electric field avoids corner. If the boundaries are PEC, you get looping type of behavior because the fields avoid corner. I should say loop, but the fields try to bend, go, just bend there. So when we have PMC instead of PC, you see the magnetic fields avoided the boundary in case of PC. So by invoking duality, we are sure that the electric field should avoid the corner. This is a phenomenon which was not accounted for. Duality is the principle, always valid. You see that you have all seen in the cavity the magnetic field structure. You know, the loop gets a little bit distorted around the corner. Do you, have you ever seen the loops going right up to the corner? No, Shelkunov explained that. So we then reason by invoking duality, we must have the electric fields avoiding corners of PMC boundary. And in case of triangle, there are sharp corners. So that's why this phenomenon was not observable in case of other shapes. But for the go for cylindrical DRA, how do you observe it? There's no way because there's no sharp corner. But here it must be the case. And indeed that was the case. We plot the fields, we found that the fields, the electric fields are trying to avoid the corners, trying to get confined in a region away from them. Consequently, to take that into account, we had defined some effective dimension. A E, not A, not the side. Side was A. This for equilateral triangle, all three sides are same, A. But instead of A, we have some to consider some effect side length a e and consequently some effective then b e and this formulation was made by us this is not through any rigorous formula but rather this is i would say a semi-empirical type of formulation but through a very rigorous effort we could get it and not only for a edtra for other shapes of TDRA also, like 30 degrees, 60, 90 degrees. These are the formulae for AE and DE. For 45, 45, 90, these are the these are the formula for AE, you see. And then uh, we use, so for all different shapes, we can now formulate like this. And then uh, we once again try to recalculate that and that resonant frequency and compare it against the experimental data given by Dr. Kish. He did not give any theory, but the theory was now provided by us. We compared it with our measured data also. Definitely now the theory is tallying nicely with the measured data, with the experimentation by us not only by Kish, we are getting the area for different modes well within appreciable, well within acceptable limit. See, for all different modes. Then we go went for a, a input impedance computation for all of these also. Again, the, the, for input impedance computation, of course, you can no longer consider an isolated DRA. You have to take into account the probe if the it's excited by probe, I mean you have to consider the excitation as before. You have to move, and then you find out that what you found out is uh, this. That is again take the results by Kish, and our theory is validating those results nicely. And uh, more interestingly, the you see the, the the resonance. If we consider the resonance to be the zero crossing for X, that's almost now at the same position 
as the maximum for R and uh, differ for different modes. And also we could uh, uh, so again compute the far field pattern following equivalence principle. And the same uh, technique as before. This is Leung's measured data. This uh, one curve is for our EMC model, another for our IPMC model. And then uh, of course, the measured data is telling measured by Leung again without any theory, but theory is by us. Again, as I had shown, I had shown earlier, this is uh, the PMC model. Almost about the two models are predicting uh, the similar results, but PMC model is somehow better. Yeah. This is another mode and uh, similar results for isosceles triangle with 70 degree included angle for uh, then 25, 25, 30, that is something. Then uh, or for all other angles also, we, uh, in uh, to in order to set test, we didn't show, of course, all of them. Radi then calculation of radiated power and quality factor, just as before. We had computed for all of them for all different modes. Very rigorous one involving all modal ER and Q all varied against the aspect ratio. You see, and then led to a different mode for different angles in isolated cellular DNA. But we presented lots of those curves here. So, what were our contributions here? Let's try to. Uh, summarize them. We were already late in starting, and then there were all these technical problems. So let's come to the end to summarize the contributions. You see, all of those analysis theoretical were lacking, particularly for the triangular DRA, which we provided. But for the other shapes, we also use the horizontally stacked DRA. If we analyze the cylindrical dielectric waveguide, even for the, we analyze the horizontally inhomogeneous rectangular DRA. All were done by us, which are all novel works. And theoretically, the duality of this ringing, which I already explained, is an absolutely new concept. Fringing and due to that avoidance of the corners. So this, this is provided by us. And this is only the, we are resulting in correct theoretical formulation. And then we could answer another very, very important question, which I don't know whether you have discussed through all these days. Why does a DRA show a much higher resonant frequency than a corresponding patch and a map? See there, for the patch, R and X curves are like this, showing the different modes. But for a DRA, the first mode is now being excited at a value much higher up. Whereas for the patch, it was at two point something. Now for the DRA, it's at six point something. This was something observed by all of us. For which reason we prefer DRA to we prefer DRA to um, just a minute, just a minute, please. Thank you for your questions. Huh. Uh, the reason is that the third modal index, remember that P, P for patch, we start from, we start and we remain at P equals zero because the patch is very thin using thin substrate so that when P higher values of P are invoked, surface waves are excited. So we can't go to those higher order modes. But for DRA, P equal to zero cannot be invoked at all because of the ground plane. I said this is the importance of the ground plane. So have to start from P, P equal to one. You see for patch. P, keeping P equal to 0, only the 32nd, 531, 356 mode is resulting in 30 gigahertz per particular case, resonant frequency. Whereas for the, this uh, C, uh, 
the, the next one, which is uh, almost indistinguishable, is coming for P equal to 1. Now, do you ever go for excitation of so many modes? No, but for DRA, we excite with P equal to 1. And that's why we first get those higher order modes. So that's it. I tried to be very brief. Now, my acknowledgments, of course, to my students. Dr. Shantan Dhar and Dr. Shurit Tonglaiti, who have both obtained their PhD through these works, and Ms. Rinki Goshal, who is still working towards the PhD. So thank you for your patience at the fag end of the day. I am stopping my presentation now, and I am just throwing my presentation rather open to the house for your comments and your questions thank you thank you professor gupta for a uh, sorry for, for a wonderful session especially on empirical modeling uh, there are some queries based on that one what are the advantages of exciting so many higher modes Hello? Hello? Am I audible? Uh, we, do, we do not add one. We do not. Uh, rather, I would say we are not able to. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can. can you, we can hear. Yeah, yes, you are can audible. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. We can Am hear I? You. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, yes. You are audible. Okay, let me let me try. Try stop presenting. Um, you can hear me. Okay, then. Okay. For patch, I explained. For patch, I explained. We do not go for so many hard modes. Yeah. Now I'm explaining why we do not excite for patch those hard order modes because that would involve firstly invocation of uh, your. Uh, Degenerate modes very closely located, so mode purity is compromised. And secondly, they will uh, result in excitation of surfaces. But that's not the case for DRAs. So for DRAs, we excite that we can get the DRA excited and operated at different higher order modes. That not only results in compactness, but also results in higher radiation efficiency. That is a basic difference. We often uh, use these higher order modes for DRAs. You see, that reason DRAs are being preferred for millimeter radar. Okay, anything more? Uh, sir, is, is, is it possible to use open source platform anything to analyze? More, that was yes, a very good question. Yes. Is it possible to use open source very environment for very... modeling of uh, antennas or for modeling of DRA? Now, any more question? Yes. I think there is some network issues. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Sir, your voice is not audible. We are not able to Definitely hear you. Definitely, anything can be done using open source platform because that is just a platform. Okay. You have to write the code for this particular analysis. So it's possible. It's definitely possible. Okay. Of course, uh, we haven't done it, but it's possible. Uh, thank you. Thank anyway, you. Professor. It's possible. It's yes, possible. Sir. Could you hear me? Yes, sir. We can I hear you. It's possible. Okay. Okay. Thank right you. Now, right now, I am. I am trying to shout as much as I can. Can you hear me now? Can you? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. It's we can hear. It's possible. My connection. My God.
My God, Gash. Any, anyway, sir, no problem. There is some issue. Again, I lost my on your side. So let's call. Okay, okay, no problem. I, but I lost my connection. That's what it's okay. So okay, okay but sir. to your last question, the answer is yes. Yes, Possible. yes. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Okay. Oh, so some, yeah, some issue is there. <clears throat> Hello. Sir, some, <laughs> sir, some network, some network problem is there on your node. There is a propagation delay also. We are not able to. Yes, and anyway, sir, I will, I will, yes, yes, I, I will apologize to the participant on your behalf as well as for our behalf, because because of network issue we cannot do anything. Anyway, sir, thank you very much uh, once again for like accepting first accepting the invitation and then delivering two lectures too late in the night as per our schedule uh, now sir okay okay yesterday yesterday I, I know very well that yesterday schedule was quite hectic for you anyway sir you have compromised with us and finally you have successfully delivered the talks with this thank you very much and uh, be healthy and stay safe and good night too okay sir Yes, yes. Sir, we can discuss that one tomorrow. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Bye, sir. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Now, on, on the behalf of uh, Professor Gupta, as well as on my personal behalf, we apologize because of this. Uh, network issue anyway we enjoyed the three sessions of uh, fourth day of this ongoing indo canada spark course on dialectic resonator and its application see you the same energy same enthusiasm tomorrow on the last day also because tomorrow two lectures followed by one mcq test will be conducted and uh, the syllabus or all the things like what you have listened in all the lectures that will be the part of uh, like questions uh, in that MCQ test. Then uh, you may refer directly uh, video lectures of the experts available on institute website because as such we have not received any uh, presentation or PPTs from any expert might be later on they will supply. To us once it is available then the same uh, ppt or presentation will be shared to all of you with this we conclude ourselves and uh, like good night good morning good afternoon to all of you see you tomorrow at 7 pm as per no, 6 30 sorry see you tomorrow at 6 30 pm as per our time zone till then bye